sight, gotta bark right. I endure pain. I am Luke Kane, mix a Bruce Wayne. I'm a Dark Knight, watch a Stargaze. I want people to understand that there's so much to life, whether you're the CEO or the janitor. Given everything you do at 150% will change your mindset and your perception of what you're doing. Yes. I said, just don't go into a job thinking it's beneath you, and then it changes your mind. Then you're your habitual complainer. All right, well, welcome to the Now or Never podcast, all things entrepreneurship, people who take life and just kick it in the ass, people who make their passion their paycheck. I'm awesome. I have two special guests today, Kat Derrison and Jen Maher. Uh, why don't you guys introduce yourselves and tell us all about what you guys do. You go first, Jen. Okay. Um, I'm Jen Maher. I, am, uh, I have Nerdville by Jen Maher, so I'm a Squarespace expert and authorized trainer. So I build websites and also work with internet marketing. I have a, a great little group of humans that I'm teaching right now that are just awesome. I call them awesomely nerdy. And so awesome. I kind of am sharing my knowledge with them and helping them um, help people all over the world, really, uh, with their websites. And then I also um, have, I co-founded Fempreneur Fair with Kath. So we can chat about that too, but... Yep. And then um, my name's Kath Darrison, obviously. <laughs> and I own uh, my new company. It's called 5e Financial. So I've just gone off solo um, and created my own registered investment advisory firm. So I do financial planning, but it's pretty untraditional compared to most financial planning firms. Yeah. Um, we don't just talk numbers. We talk emotions, feelings, and really get to kind of the discovery of what do you want from your life? What do you want from your, your money, which is integral to every mm -hmm. element that you've got? And obviously the Fempreneur Fair with Jen. Mm -hmm. um, but then I also sit on a board for a nonprofit called Financial Beginnings, which teaches uh, financial literacy for basically any age group, like yeah. from kindergarten all the way through to adulthood. Awesome. Yeah. Wow. I mean, yeah. That's yeah. Awesome. So yeah, I mean, where anyone start? Well, I mean, yeah. what's originally what, when we met you is that you became a member of Iron Heaven Gym. Yes. And then, uh, and then you, with the Fempreneur, I kind of got introduced mm -hmm. to that this last year when Brittany got to go. And then also my daughter, our oldest daughter, mm -hmm. uh, started her first L uh, her first LLC and her first little yeah. shop. And, and then she went much I go, listen, I've had like I've started like 15 of them. Like, mm -hmm. You don't have to like, you know, you got to find your passion. You got to figure out where it lays. And mm -hmm. I think it's awesome yeah. to have a group of, of women business owners, entrepreneurs to for her to look up to. Because I talked to them blue in the face, but it's a different demographic. It's, yeah. a, different, it's a different kind of process. And um, I guess what spurred the whole Fempreneur thing, I guess that's I really want to know like what that just the want for something different yeah. um where we felt like we could be included yeah. i think a lot of the time when you go to kind of like job fairs business yeah. fairs it's very big much uh, very much big firm money or you know male orientated firms because women have always <laughs> potential or not always but a lot of the time have taken back seat to like raise children mm. and have maybe entered the career path a bit later so starting businesses you know hasn't come kind of through the generations. Yeah. And, and now I think there's a lot more female business owners, but there weren't any real events for no. female business owners, especially in the Omaha area. Yeah. 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 We literally, we were sitting at Truvi. We, at that time, that's how we met. Mm -hmm. And, um, we would, it's, it was a women's co-working center, which, um, I would be sitting at a table and Kath would come in and she kept sitting closer and closer and then we started collaborating <laughs> and we'd be fine. Yeah. <laughs> no, we, we just kind of gravitated we towards did, each yeah. other too. And we were yeah. sitting one day and talking. I did a creep a little bit. No. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, but we just gravitated towards each other and we were talking about, um, you know, what our goals were and what we were each mm -hmm. doing. And then, um, you know, I kind of said, I wish we could just, I, I want, like the Omaha used to have the um, By the Big O Show. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that? And I yeah. haven't seen anything like that recently. And so we were kind of, I think we just hopped on our computers and started searching for things and didn't find anything. And then we definitely didn't find anything even regionally that was female focused. And yeah. so we were both like, let's just do this. And I think within like 30 minutes, we had a logo created. We had the yeah. name. We, we started awesome. building the website yeah. and we launched their first, um, gosh, the first one was like two weeks after. Yeah. Just a little bit of two weeks over. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We had amazing success. It was really fun. So yeah. yeah. And we didn't really do it for like success financially for both of us. It was more about bringing other women that yeah. we knew were going through the same struggles as us mm -hmm. yeah. into the same place, mm -hmm. to be around each other, to yeah. like learn and be inspired by one another. Well, yeah, when that's, a, that's the whole reason we started the podcast, honestly, yeah. was just, I, I screwed up. Every mistake possibly to make, I've made mm -hmm. probably twice sometimes. Mm -hmm. I'm a slow learner. Um, and all this stuff <laughs> that I didn't learn in business school. I mean, because mm -hmm. literally 99% of what I do was not learn in business school at all. But I mean, I got to play football in college. It's pretty much it. But mm -hmm. on the most part, like we should all the things in how to get financing, how to do, how to, how to start LLC, how mm -hmm. to do those, like what kind of, you know, how to get, uh, what kind of banks to not go to and mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. And that was just it, just a way of paying it for. And honestly, just cause I mean, nobody took me seriously. And I mean, we were like, well, you'll wait till you're 50. 
you know, make a lot of money, mm-hmm. then start your own business. Mm-hmm. I'm like, that sucks. Yeah, that's so, yeah. So, um, you know, and that's, I think I started my first company when I was 19. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, I mean, I think I'm on like 13th LLC or something <laughs> stupid. And, you know, then. Just keep them coming. Well, then I Brittany, I, well, then Brittany yeah. and I met. And then it was, you know, I was having some success at Rexius. And it was, you know, and when I met her and she's from a small business family, she's an entrepreneur and I'm, and, and told me all the things I was doing wrong. <laughs> um, and we went from, we were in one, or we were in two states. No, we had just, we were in one state. Yeah. And within a year, we were operating in four states. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. And, and with no extra money, no extra mm-hmm. financing, mm-hmm. just, uh, you know, another set of eyes. And it was huge. And so I think with us having three daughters, um, which is... Uh, which is why I work out a lot. A lot. <laughs> um, it's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. And, and it's in each one of them. I'm like, you know, like, what do you want to do? How do you make your path? I think it's nice mm-hmm. to have people to look up to and different examples to follow. So I, I applaud you both from that. I think it's fantastic. And I think the more social events and groups people can get involved with, the better. I mean, right. the more yeah. hands you yeah. can shake, uh, the more people you can meet, the more inspiration you can get. And like I told, we've said it a hundred times. I don't care if you're 16 or 60, if you, mm-hmm. there's, there's some lesson to be learned. To, from somebody yeah. i mean it's it's our responsibility to society to pass that along just, yeah i think so um we'll start with the financial planning aspect like how long have you been in that and i mean no so i uh, just a bit of background obviously i'm not from here so really oh, no, I, know. I don't I know could, I mean, <laughs> alabama <laughs> accent <I> yeah <laughs> totally so. south. definitely the south the telltale south um so yeah so when I was um, in the equivalent of college, so we call them universities in the UK. Yeah. So when I was in the university, um, there's only like a three year degree that you do over there because schooling is very different. We start earlier and everything else. So my degree was focused for three years. So we don't do that first year that everybody does over here. And then I was planning on going to teaching, uh, do a teaching course. Mm-hmm. I'd all had it all planned. I was going to be an English literature teacher. That was it. That was my 100% goal for life didn't happen um, <laughs> obviously so I basically didn't um, there was issues with like the application process so I didn't meet the time limit for when applications had to be in um, so I completely said okay I'm going to take a year off and work basically Yeah. so kind of played around with a few ideas I've worked a little bit through those years anyway just you know at, like restaurants bars etc and then decided that actually let me get like an actual full time job and get some career experience and uh, my first job was at a big bank that's an international bank yeah. and uh, the position I actually applied for um, they told me I didn't get that I'd actually got a position that was actually paid more so I was like oh, hey, nice. nice. yeah. 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 um, that never happens that's that fantastic never yeah. happens. and that was like my first experience into finance so I was like oh <laughs> so I get a huge pay rise yeah. from what I was expecting um, and then it kind of just snowballed from there so I started to learn a little bit more about the different types of financial roles that people can play um, and kind of then gravitated more towards the financial planning, which is really, it's different now than it used to be. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So when I started, it's, it's in the UK, it's very much coming to what that is like now here. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not the transactional anymore. It's not about just give me your money and I'll invest it for you. It's very much more like, let me find out who you are yeah, and let me get to know you and see how I can help you. Yeah. I think there's a lot I to be like said that. about it. I mean, I, exactly. I mean, I went through four years of business school. I have a master's and I can tell you right now, I have absolutely zero educational investing whatsoever. Most people. None. Mm-hmm. I mean, none. It, it's, it's, I didn't even learn how to bounce my checkbook until I was like a sophomore in college, which is right. why I, I <laughs> bounced it a lot. My dad, my dad was a vice president of a bank. Like, that's on you, pops. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, I think that I think I like that attitude though, because it is. Yeah. And I think there, I think there's a misconception with financial planning, but like it is that hey, just give me. So I always mm-hmm. avoided it like a plague because I'm totally. like, no. yeah, I think mm-hmm. they're just trying to sell you or get you. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. And some are, some are sales oh, yeah. reps. You know, that is that is their position. Mm-hmm. The way that I do things is very different. So I'm a what they call a fee only planner and I'm a fiduciary. So that they're like the two key points of my business. So fee only is the fact that I don't get commissions or kickbacks from any other avenue. Mm -hmm. So I'm really transparent and there's like no conflict of interest in that. Um, How I get paid is directly from my clients. That makes it really clean, really simple. And then being a fiduciary is basically a legal requirement for me to put my clients first. Yeah. Now everyone thinks, well, yeah, that's what financial, no. Financial advisors all aren't the same. Not right. all of them are fiduciaries. And that's like a super important thing that I did not realize over here, which is a big difference to the UK. Yeah. Because that's kind of a standard practice over there. Okay. okay. Um, but you get different categories. So not all advisors are the same. Not all of them have to put their clients' needs first. Which is it's, so okay. Like, I, I never knew that. And, something we yeah. discussed yeah. And she was like, what do you mm-hmm. mean? And I was like, well, <laughs> there's different levels. I think we're so and ignorant. About, like, that's just not something we talk about. And I think we are probably a little bit intimidated to talk about. Mm-hmm. You know, it's 
not yeah. something I go like searching to learn about. Can you tell me about yourself? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Kath also has this amazing way of just talking. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll be having conversations and then all of a sudden I'm like, I think I just had a financial breakthrough. Like I think mm-hmm. yeah. just because it's a, kind of almost a natural like counseling aspect yeah. to it. We're just asking questions and getting to know you and your patterns and like, yeah. you know. Do you think maybe it's a problem that you... <laughs> yeah, I always say to people, like, no question is too silly. Like, people yeah. are so afraid to ask mm-hmm. those basic questions because they think they, they should know that. Mm-hmm. Right. I think it's maybe just with experience in life. I think at this point in time, I'm at the point I like, understand. Like, we were talking about commercial real estate the other day, mm-hmm. and I'm usually the, the go-to financial guy for the companies, for all the companies. And they're like, well, I go, oh, I've watched 20 YouTube videos. I'm at 1%. That's all I know. I know yeah. nothing. Yep. And Nick was like, well, I go, if you're expecting some knowledge to come out of this, I have no clue. <laughs> this is so far out of my realm. He's like, oh, we got to talk to people way smarter than me. Mm-hmm. Just, and it's one of those things, I think when I was 29 or 25 or 20, I would have been like, no, I'll figure it out. I'm not right. going to ask anybody. Yeah. Almost yeah. embarrassed and egotistical at the same time, I yeah. think, because it was like, I'm, I'm good at what I do. Well, I think it's part of the industry yeah. as well. Like a lot of advisors don't explain those terms and they mm-hmm. just talk to you in their lingo mm-hmm. yes. that you are supposed to understand from their point of view and yeah. I think that's like an old school way of kind of doing things yeah. that isn't really helping well, the I, next I, generation I, I, right I, well, it is and I think I've, I made that say my business partner Shane and Rexy is we've, for 10 years and we said the same thing we deal with realtors I'm like don't use any any abbreviations at all yeah mm-hmm. Like they what if you start using acronyms and abbreviations, we're going to make fun of you, and because I don't know what they mean, <laughs> and it is, but they do that a lot, and it's one of those things I don't like being made to feel dumb because uh-huh. I don't know what I didn't know what an LOI was, and, and so I like I'm like yeah, I do the LOI, and I'm on my phone. I'm like, this yeah. I mean, <laughs> I don't, you know, I think that's we and we encourage that to our kids. Like if you ask a question, there's nothing wrong. Yeah. But I think it, I think it is. I think it's an age thing too. I think it is mm-hmm. just understanding. But I believe that uh, that's one powerful thing about social media is being able to use yeah. social media and YouTube and these mm-hmm. different things that we didn't have 20 years ago. Mm-hmm. I think it's also kind of almost a mind shift where, you know, when we were growing up, I think people didn't want to share their knowledge. Like I went to school to become that, like, I don't want to teach. I just want to do this for you, but I don't want to actually right. share. Yeah. And so mm-hmm. I think it's part, I, I honestly think like a lot of my success and probably yours too, just being able to admit when you don't know something. Yeah. So absolutely. Um, and, and collaboration it, is huge yeah. too. I mean, I'm a big proponent of like, if I don't know something and there's somebody in a different industry like CPA, mm-hmm. I would rather collaborate with a CPA mm-hmm. than okay. learn what a CPA does because that is not yeah, my it's not my strength. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you see it. I mean, and it was, uh, we talked about this with customers in the stores and people have asked me like, you know, dealing with neurolinguistics and people's personality mm-hmm. types. I said, honestly, I love dealing with surgeons and the stores and all these different, and they're why? Because they're so specialized in their field. Mm-hmm. And they are just experts. Mm-hmm. And when they come to me for nutrition, they know that this is what I do. And they don't argue. I mean, I'm yeah. talking cardiothoracic surgeons. Well, yep. I went to school for 16 years. Good for you, dude. Mm-hmm. Like, I could barely wow. make it through four. Nope. But he goes, hey, like, I don't know the protein. I don't know. I'm like, you cut open hearts. Mm-hmm. How do you not know? But at the mm-hmm. same point, it's cool. He goes, well, if you have a foot problem, I'm going to tell you to go to a podiatrist. Right. I'm not going to. He goes, that's yeah. not my field. Yeah. Yeah. And I love that level of like respect and expertise mm-hmm. for other fields. Like, come to investing. I have no clue. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I go to a professional for everything oh. that I need. Like, oh, I don't, absolutely. you know, I have somebody to do my hair. I have somebody right. that I go to for my, you know, accounts. I have somebody that I go to. I go to a bank to do my banking. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, it's like, I'm not going to do it all myself. Well, I say, don't know it all. We did repairs at the gym and my drywall guy, Jeremy, he's like, well, I go, oh, dude, just do you. Yeah. So like, I'm hiring you because yeah. you're really good and I have zero desire to even know how to do any of this. And then when I'll feel bad for being too cheap to do it myself, mm-hmm. like I, you just go ahead and you do, you go, I go, I'm not looking over your shoulder. You're a pro. Like mm-hmm. you go ahead. Like yep. if I have a question, I'll ask, but like mm-hmm. just you do you, I have no desire to do and it. I don't think there's any shame in that, but no. I think there is that kind of, as you said, that it's an age thing. I think some of it, you know, yeah, mm-hmm. that inner, I should be able to do this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, it's like, we're putting a new front door in our house and he's like, I could probably do this. And I'm like, it's the front door of our house. Like, <laughs> I, if you screw it up, we have, no I get front door. saving some money. Door. I said, but <laughs> let's, let's hire this out. Like, <laughs> when no. you look at how much time sometimes things, that's what I always say. Yeah. There are, I, there are exceptions. I mean, what I do is I actually, rather than I have, I choose not to work with people that say, I just want you to build my website. So I choose to work with, I want to teach yeah. them because yeah. So it's a little bit different because um, I want them to have that knowledge. I want them to be able to, they, they shouldn't have to come back to oh, me yeah. every time. And so there's, but I think for most things I say, you know, if you're, if, if it's something, if it's going to take you longer, then 
gosh, no, like absolutely. Yeah. Like it's well, not I, I, so I've always like, I always want to learn because I don't, mm-hmm. if I don't understand it, I, I, I think for, especially as a, as a lead yeah. of a company, like, it, like, like Rex is now we're in eight States. I, I don't necessarily need to be able to do it, but I need to know how it works because right. mm-hmm. I can't lead if I don't yeah. understand totally. the position. And that's, and so like, you know, she's so much better at accounting than I am. It's ridiculous. I get credit this time. Thanks. Yeah, you get, always get credit. <laughs> and I'm like, Hey, you need to fix this. <laughs> <laughs> also, tell me how you fixed it. You know, and mm-hmm. it's it's yeah. it's one of those things, and, and it, but I want to know because mm-hmm. it's just it's a wealth of knowledge. I think more than anything else. Yeah. Like my CPA and I have great conversations. I have no mm-hmm. desire to ever be one. Me, but kind of like mm-hmm. I, I, I give yeah. me the cliff notes. Like I want to understand, <laughs> right. but I'm not looking for dumb what tax code. Yeah. yeah, oh, definitely dumb totally. it down for me. <laughs> when it comes to that. So, and then how did you get into? I mean, everything you're doing, like with the website creation, like how did that all start and spur for you? Um. So I like to call myself like Forrest Gump. So I think if you look back over everything that I've done, I've just kind of always let life take me where it's going to take me. And if I'm interested in something and I want to learn about it, then I I kind of pursue it. But um, so back in high school, in college, I actually went to school for child development, but then ended up in marketing, which I always think is interesting because really a lot of the same principles that we learn in child development really goes into marketing as well. And um, but I I worked for some pretty great companies uh, like the Western Crown Center Hotel and um, a few really nice restaurants moved to Omaha to be the marketing manager for Biagi's. Okay. Um, somehow or another, oh, I started, I opened my own business. I just had this passion. I wanted to open a nanny placement agency. Um, young, 28 years old, would not take advice from anyone at that time. And so I just wanted to do it all myself. It blew up. It was fantastic, but it grew too big too fast and it scared me. And, and I ultimately just shut it down while it was in its peak Prime. success. And yeah, <laughs> um, but just thought, well, maybe I'll get back to this at some point. Um, had a job opening at my daughter's school and ended up teaching computers for 12 years. So, but at the time that I was building my, um, the nanny source was my business. Um, I needed to build a website and thought, well, this is fun. I knew I was going to pay someone to do it. And, but I thought before I do that, I want to dabble in it. I want to understand yeah. mm-hmm. what the, you know, the basics are so that I can kind of help guide him on what my vision is. And I ended up accidentally building my own website that night. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so then I'm like, well, this is fun. And I did it for a few other friends while I was teaching. But, um, while I was at, I was at St. Patrick's in Elkhorn and I was mm-hmm. the computer and technology teacher for 12 years and also got to go around the schools and train the teachers on how to integrate technology into the class classroom and loved that aspect of it. I just love yeah. sharing knowledge and kind of, you know, seeing the things that were happening because all of these other people were, you know, kind of coming on board. And, um, after my daughter left and was getting into high school and wasn't right under my wing anymore, I thought maybe I could start a business. I, I ultimately went out to start a business for, um, I wanted to teach teachers. So okay. had that business kind of had that all set up. And then Jeff Massey, do you know Jeff Massey? Mm-hmm. With, uh, so I went to work with him at Trezenbold, um, kind of helping him with some QuickBooks, which is crazy. <laughs> just, do you not talk to Jen about no, QuickBooks no, right now? Yeah, <laughs> no, no, no. Um, but helped him with some of his business things, ended up helping him um, with websites and with his business when he had his accident. And at that time, there were so many people coming in asking about social media marketing, and we didn't do that. And so I'm like, you know what? I'm going to teach myself to become a social media marketing expert. So that was actually my business. When I left Jeff, I had I did purely social media marketing. And then, unfortunately, most of the people I was working with had horrible websites. So yeah. then I started building websites for them. And that then awesome. Squarespace invited me to be an authorized trainer for them. And then last year, they invited me to become an expert. So now they basically feed me all of their leads. So... That's crazy. It's been, yeah, it's pretty neat. We get that to work with clients all over the world and, and it, it got too big for me, but this time I'd learned my lesson. And right. so I kind of scaled it down and I created Nerdville, which is an opportunity for me to pass on what I've learned to yeah. these, you know, younger, um, well, not all younger. Like there's a lot of, a lot of people on my team that I'm growing and. So, well, that and is I, so I, awesome. I think there's a lot to be said about that. Like as like the website, the first Rex's website was, well, my buddy Derek helped me and then I'm like, okay, well. Huh. He, but he doesn't speak my language as far as the business. I mean, he didn't understand mm-hmm. the customer. Mm-hmm. He understood the websites because he's brilliant. But and at the time, I'm like, yeah, yeah. There's an a meathead on the planet that's gonna like this. This is bad. So then I had to learn. As we did a lot, we in the Iron Heaven one, I made my just. I needed to learn, and that that's the aspect. Is like I, I kind of know. I know my customer. Mm-hmm. It's people like the websites. And I think there needs to be a, a consortium together. Yep. That's yeah. the way you get the best vision. And but it's like websites. It's a constant. I mean, it's you have to be able to keep it updated. Yeah, yeah. it's time. constant. Like, and mm-hmm. so because I've learned a lot from Jen, I built my new one, and mm-hmm. I'm like, it looks so bad. 
No, it does not. It doesn't it's look beautiful. like it's, Jen made it. Put it that no, way. It looks like yeah. I definitely did it for myself. There's a, I mean, it, we, so we do things a little bit because of the marketing, but I think it's really yeah. interesting. And it's kind of one of those, like when you, when I started this, all of a sudden I'm like, oh my gosh, you look at the way your past has brought you here. And you're mm-hmm. like every mm-hmm. single experience I had, every thing I did yeah. brought me to this place where all of these pieces come together to make me valuable yeah. at what I do right now. So yeah. the marketing side of it, the development, the child development, I believe the sociology aspect yeah. of it Absolutely. is really helping with like the marketing piece. And when we talk to clients, we don't just, we don't do like web development. It's more an internet marketing piece. So we yeah. want okay. the website to be a part of the full package. So we don't, mm. we really take the time to get to know like what, you know, your website's obviously going to look well, different and it, than Kath's is. And, and it really should be part of the marketing mm-hmm. process because that's the whole purpose of it. Right. It's just another sales yeah. tool. And, and nobody, I think people just, oh, we're going to make a website and it's just going to sit here. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. we are going to do all these other things. It should be. You fi- I mean, it's funny because like we had talked about with, with yours that people are a little scared to talk to financial planners. And from a business aspect, this is what I get from so many entrepreneurs that reach out to me for advice is they're scared to death to talk to a web developer. Mm-hmm of any sort mm-hmm. because they're, 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 it is it's a major fear issue because they're like I don't know how much that's going to cost mm-hmm. I don't want to get talked into something I can't oh, afford yeah, right. I have no like, and if it's such so out of your realm it's mm-hmm. like I'm good at selling this you know mm-hmm. and this is like I know I need this web piece and I need this to do uh, help out with the Instagram mm-hmm. and, and the Facebook and all that he goes, but I'm so scared to even talk to somebody and and like for me it, 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 it's yeah. legitimate because I'm very excitable I mm-hmm. sell shit all day long and but so I'm the easiest sold I am the yeah. easiest sales Target. market on the planet yeah. and so like she's like setting up people coming to look at windows at her house I'm like you set it up you have to be there I'm not allowed to lease a car without her because I'll be like you know let's do it let's go yeah. I have no idea I'm going to pay for that's this that's why let's the go. kids go to him when yeah. they want something that's I'm true. the mean one I'm the easy I'm... mark because oh, I get so excited you know mm-hmm. and and it's but it, it, there's fear like mm-hmm. I think with yeah. that I think that's, that's good that's valuable for me to know because I've never heard it that is. Never, it, it, it's, it was like, it's like for us like we need to update our site now and before I was like I don't even want to deal with it right now because I don't want I don't even want to think about it budget wise I don't and it's with each thing but the thing is each one of the companies think of we're, we're lucky to be in the position that everything for us is growing yeah and it is it's been growing yeah. pains like rexy's was way too big too fast way too much too fast it, it, we went all of a sudden we went from six operations to 20 some in different states and i have my, <laughs> yeah. my aspect with legal and state and federal like i have a lot it's of regulations yeah. Oh, so yeah. i can't even touch the site they're like hey the site i go that's future tim's gonna mm-hmm. knock the hell on that problem mm-hmm. current tim's got to deal with the yeah. IRS right now well and so, i like her approach to it is that she you're teaching mm-hmm. along the way because we've had people work on the website and then if we need something changed we have to go back to them yeah. But even just that correspondence to, to go back to them, mm-hmm. it takes time. And right now, time is very time valuable. Is and, right. and there isn't a lot of time. And if so, we, If something got put on the website at the wrong price, we need to know how to change that. Right. Because right. it could be a vendor regulation. Yep. It could cost us and 15 franchise locations who depend on us not to do something stupid yeah. for yep. our family mm-hmm. to lose that product line. And it really is that sense. That be, and they, they expect it now. I'm like, listen, I don't know how to do that. Yeah. yeah. Or even us updating the addresses. Yeah. And franchisees are pissed because they got put in there or they moved. And so people were looking up on Google Maps trying mm-hmm. to get their store and it's leading them like it happened in Colorado. I'm like, yeah. I'd be sure like, Jared, I have not a clue. I'm watching YouTube videos right now. Yeah, give me <laughs> a hot minute. I'm making notes, <laughs> yeah. but I don't know how to do that. How to embed a, a clickable or linkable Google map into a website. I did learn how so, to do so that. I, nice. so I, yeah. Of course, my wife has got way more patience than me. I'm like, hey, it's got your name right Guess what you need to do. Right yeah. yeah. And so she's like, five hours later, she's like, I think I figured it out. I'm like, oh, no, shit. I thought for sure. Oh, okay. Well, good for you. Because <laughs> I, I gave it like 20 minutes. I'm like, I'm done. So, but there is, there's fear in a lot of that kind of mm-hmm. stuff. I think that's, but that's also like, I, that's why I think it's so beautiful about the Fempreneur conferences. Mm-hmm. I think you break down some of those barriers. It takes away some of that. Like, this is a safe place to talk to people yeah. about stuff. And I yeah. think that's. Be really honest. Like, we yeah. want to be really transparent yeah. with people. And, you know. And I think that's, that's one thing, like, I took into consideration as well with the industry that I'm in. Like, not a lot of people are transparent about mm-hmm. prices so people don't know so i made it clear i have a price list on mm-hmm. my website that's awesome that is awesome like, trying to find that on every website doesn't exist it's not physically possible but removing that extra barrier yeah you know, mm-hmm. is just less of a hurdle then for people to be able to go okay i can reach out because i know what to expect it makes it more yeah. trusting it, it makes it more open and yeah I mean, we've, we've said that with our, like, because we've worked in the other industries, in the bigger companies, the bigger corporations. I worked at GNC. I worked with these bigger ones. And we're in American Research, which was a fantastic company, but it was even more national. I dealt with the government. So I've dealt with, like, the, and so we started Rexy. I'm like, listen, there's no commission. 
Mm-hmm. It's it's we, we we tell our customer like there's no commission. I don't care if you buy mm-hmm. one or two, and here it is. Like, well, what's the website? I go, oh, okay. Well, we're five bucks cheaper than Bodylane.com, but yeah. oh, I'm like, but I can match the price if you want me to. I'll take the. We we're very transparent. Yeah. So we started the yep. gym, and we're like, okay, what's all the things that we hate? I hate contracts. I hate two page contracts. I hate that six point font. Yep. I hate fees. I hate mm-hmm. all this. So we're like, well, let's not do it. So our entire our entire waiver and, and uh, contract is about that big. Yep, it's awesome. It's just tiny. Like, like, what if I want to quit? I'm like, just drop an email, smoke mm-hmm. signal, high five, I don't know, whatever you want to do it. Like, you don't want a beer, don't be here. Mm-hmm. And, and they're like, well, how do I go? Because we're just going to be honest. Either, you know, we had a, because local business, I think, is huge because I'm going to see you at the grocery store. Right. I'm going to see you mm-hmm. at church or yep. I don't want you to hate me. And, you know, our kids might go to school together. I think that's where the, the small local business right. and knowing the person in charge yeah. is so valuable mm-hmm. over buying just something online. You know, I I mean, and you have to protect you yourself a little. I mean, so that's, but I also think that when you, when you're doing good things and when you're presenting yourself in the right mm-hmm. way and taking care of people, then you automatically kind of have that built in protection. I mean, it might be naive and, but that's just. No, I think it's the value mm-hmm. of transparency. Mm-hmm. That yeah. whole, like, oh, yeah. this is it. Mm-hmm. I, it and there's sometimes is. like a shame factor to talking about money and talking about mm-hmm. how much things cost for mm-hmm. website design or whatever. Mm-hmm. People are just like, oh, I won't, don't want to put that on there. I don't want to put them off. Well, you're going to have to tell them anyway at some point. Yeah. So. Well, it's also that one point, like I never wanted to like get somebody's hopes up either that I know like, okay, yeah, that's awesome. That's gorgeous. Mm-hmm. There's no chance in hell I could afford that. Mm-hmm. You know what yeah. I mean? And that's, that's yeah. the thing is I know that they're all doing the same thing I did when I started. Right. And mm-hmm. that's the thing that we figured out with everything else. And it was like the only time I ever messed with anybody was him, was Chad. Yeah. When he came in. <laughs> poor and, Chad. Hey, poor Chad. <laughs> so the first time he came in, he's all nervous, you know, because he just went on his own. And then he sees, but this is production. And Brittany's texting me on the side. Are you going to tell me he's got a job? I'm like, no. I'm gonna let him sweat, but I've known him since first grade, so like I can do that to him. But well, I'm gonna start telling uh, all your secrets. <laughs> oh no, God. God, I'm gonna start airing all your dirty laundry. No, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> it, 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 but it was it was funny because like he was doing the same thing that we've all done. Mm-hmm becoming his own business owner, mm-hmm. become an entrepreneur. There's no, there's a starting point. You have no customers. You just have you, and you got to figure it out. Mm-hmm. And I think we've all. I mean, when people, entrepreneurs hang around each other, I think we bring each other So around. valuable. Oh, oh yeah. It's huge. I mean, Absolutely. that's the piece I was missing with Nanny Source. I mean, it was just me on my own trying to prove something to myself and everyone else and not really getting that knowledge. And then, you know, versus now where I, I feel like looking at the three years that I've been in business with this business, seeing how much it's changed and transformed. And a lot of it comes from understanding the value of like, I was giving away so much for free just because I love And, you know, Kath saying your, your time is valuable and you have to, I mean, just having all of yeah. these people that really kind of helped me have those aha moments and put, I have to put mm. processes in place. I have to, you know, all of exactly. these things that aren't, maybe aren't natural to me, but now I've gotten advice mm-hmm. from some fantastic people. So it's super valuable to well, have. And that's yeah. it. I had one of the guys messages about exit strategies for businesses. And what if you want to sell your business? I have no mm-hmm. desire to sell anything we have. I also avoid talking to them because I don't understand any of the terms you're using. <laughs> so I'd signed up. We ended up having another podcast shoot happen. So I had to cancel on them, but they were flying up to, and we ended up canceling. Like, I go, listen, I have no desire. I'll be 100% honest. Like, I am nowhere near, like, I'm not that old. So, like, mm-hmm. I think they saw the video. I had a lot of white in my beard. I'm like, no, actually, that's, that's kid <laughs> cause. This guy's retiring. That's, that's, yeah. that's kid <laughs> cause. That's 20 years early. I said, but I really want to know because I don't understand the terms. I'm yeah. still 100% mm-hmm. honest with the dude. And he goes, oh, I'm like, I really don't understand any of that stuff. I don't understand the tax penalty. I don't know anything. And that's so, that's what I try to tell. So, I do have some other financial planners that I work with or other in different, you know, industries. <laughs> couple of things like when you're building a website we tend to build it for we understand our I just got caught my husband was like I looked at your website and I don't get it like because I get it and it makes perfect sense to me but you kind of have to we tend to do that but I think also just being able to dumb it down and that's probably why I feel like when, when I first started doing my videos and training videos and things like that I remember having oh my gosh we used to talk about uh what was the the little crisis that I used to have like um when you're imposter syndrome Mm -hmm. yeah all the time. I remember my first video, I sat and cried for like three days, kept trying it over and over again. I was pr- comparing myself to other people mm-hmm. and then realized that that's not why the people that like me like me because, because I kind of dumb things down. And yeah. I do have squirrel moments. I look at, I see a bird and I'm like, oh, my God, sorry, everybody. <laughs> yeah, right there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Shiny toy yeah. syndrome. Shiny toy yeah. syndrome. Yeah. So, but I think that that's, and I think that that's where my teaching kindergarten through eighth grade kind of helped me dump, feel comfortable with dumbing things down. And I think it's been really valuable. So I always tell my clients, I mean, feel free to, you don't have to, I think that when we try to use the correct terminology, when we try to act to the kind of, we're puffing ourselves up almost for our competitors. Mm-hmm. Like I don't want my competitor to watch a video and say, gosh, she doesn't know what she's talking about. She just called that, you know, little thing a thingy, you know, whatever. Yeah. Right. Um, but it's, I'm not. 
I shouldn't be trying You're to real. sell. I'm, You're I'm authentic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I yeah. think that we all should try to kind of share our knowledge and, yeah. and dumb it down is probably not the best way to say that, but I mean, I think make it, it so that it, people are, it's more approachable and they can understand a little yeah. bit better. And well, I think that's where the podcast has been good for us. Um, people seeing us just, we start out the basic. I have a lot of, we have mm-hmm. a lot of storytelling, how people mm-hmm. started all the things we didn't know. And, and so now we're growing, we're about to open up a couple more franchises actually, even in crazy, this is craziness, but you know, it's all about the, the person. Mm-hmm. I know that it's, 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 it's all about the person behind it. And in our stores retail, it's about the person who backs the business. Mm-hmm. And people are like, listen, I know nothing. I'm like, cool. Neither did I. Yeah. And, but it's go. amazing. The questions they ask, and like the last yeah. like we we sat there they have meetings that come up they we go out to them they're like hey i have no idea i've had to screen share how to set up an llc mm-hmm. they're like mm-hmm. i don't i go cool just i don't just just facetime me yeah like, seriously, i go yeah i mean it's just but i think it's because the podcast is i think that's why we do it i mean i don't make any money doing this mm-hmm. i've made 16 dollars on youtube yep. yeah uh, nice. retired. Yeah. 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 monetized big time yeah. uh, <laughs> that's a great 300 stream. more 300 more years of this and i'm gonna have something uh-huh. um, 16 dollars because of me that yeah. is i Get way more views when she's on. That's, 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 absolutely, that's, absolutely, that's why Chad's like Brittany's on, right? I'm like, God, dude, I'm like, yeah, she's on. Um, but I think that's a, it's been it's a mate. But you know, the people are just nervous. Yeah. I think it, they, in breaking that down is huge. I think that's mm-hmm. the power of social media right now is that you're able to basically project yourself out mm-hmm. to people and like. It's just, I think the reason we get so much because we are real. Because mm-hmm. well, well, for lack of a better term in our family, we're a shit show. Mm-hmm. I got twenty year old down to one year old. Like they're like, I go listen. I'm just like you know. We had a I'm pretty I was sure a, I have a sign in our living room that says "Welcome to the, the shit, shit show." show. <laughs> and, and it's and, it, and I, all the other parents like because there's so many kids in our house all the time. They're like, well, you, I go, oh, if you were expecting a lot of maturity or professionalism, yeah, you there is. That's not happening. No. Like this is it. And it's funny. I I said this is on our last podcast and. Uh, with the dads who left yesterday and I said I go it's funny because now I'm looking at my age and I've got kids and we're business owners and we're like my parents didn't have a clue what they were doing either no nope. it's so really mm-hmm. what a relaxing point of view mm-hmm. where I'm like they look so grown up at the time yep, and they I had know. their shit together and realized that they didn't know either well that's probably so. part of the power of like this group you know mm-hmm. it's, we're, you know when I was trying to do my when I was having my imposter syndrome and I'm listening because I'm watching all of these people that just look so polished and professional. And then I'm with other people that are admitting that they have, you know, they are, they're mm-hmm. nervous about something or they're not sure how to do this. Or, yeah. I think um, that was one thing we, we took into consideration with the fempreneur side was to have like people from all different levels mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, and success points, you know, and don't have everybody who's already a success. Right. right. Have people who are still employed mm-hmm. by, you know, a big, big firm. For, mm-hmm. for instance, that haven't broken off yet because they have that fear. Yeah. yeah. And have other people there who are in exactly the same boat alongside people who've already been in business right. for a few years. Yeah. So people can really like ask those questions that they probably wouldn't want to ask yeah. in a different public setting. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's we've we've had because we encourage our, our franchisees as they become business owners to become mm-hmm. part of the get the chamber. Mm-hmm. Find the entrepreneur groups, find the, you know, uh, the networking groups and and it's and I explained to them I just because I've been around doing this I've done so much public speaking to me I don't care mm. um, and I don't look like a CEO I'm tattooed I wear flip flops because I start them all business I wear flip flops and so we go to chamber <laughs> meetings we go <laughs> to these same you way know, I mean I just I, this is dressed up I'm wearing collar for you guys I mean, yeah. it never happens Chad's laughing because he knows I'm true um, <laughs> I'm usually in t-shirts I don't care they, they, people are expecting something much more professional with the the acumen of the, mm-hmm. the business we have and, and and the thing I found is is when I go to these bigger chamber meetings and everybody else is rocking these suits that I'm just going to be me. And, I, and the thing is, I know what makes people feel empowered is the ability that they're in the teacher position. People mm-hmm. like to talk mm-hmm. about what they do. Right. Mm-hmm. They like to educate. People like to teach. It empowers mm-hmm. them. And so I didn't do this with customers half the time. Like, well, tell me what you do. Like, yeah. I don't get it. Asking questions. Like, I yeah. have a car. I'm like, and I don't know shit about cars. I'm like, hey, I like, what's well, got the 320? I go, I bro, I, what does that mean? Right. And they're like, but, and they'll yeah. sit there and be like, they're going the whole thing. And for me, I like to learn. And it's funny. I go to these chamber and all of a sudden it was, I had to go give a speech at the Midwest Real Estate Conference a couple years ago. My realtor, Dan, who I'm doing his podcast tomorrow. Yeah, here's your 10 minutes of fame, Dan. <laughs> so um, he's like, yeah, it's just a little thing. Well, I just had tattoo work done. Mm-hmm. And so I'm wearing a polo and just some khaki pants and some shorts. I will up and they have three guys I'm sitting next to in a room of five or 600 people. I had no idea. I thought it was like 50. <laughs> wearing five to $10,000 suits. And one's like the C, the CFO of McAllister's Deli, and one's a CFO for Scooter's Call. I'm like, hey, what's up, guys? How's it going? How you guys? Like, you guys got PowerPoints? Cool. Shit. And they're like, what are you doing? I'm like, yeah, I found out like an hour ago, and I'm gonna wing it. They're like, can I stay and watch yours? I go, yes. Winging it is the best. I, yeah. I told Michael, listen, like, how's it gonna go? I go, 
if they don't laugh at my first joke, I'm beelining stage left. I'm out. Yeah. Like, and if they do, and, and it, it went really, really well. That's how I got, I actually got a lot of opportunities out of that. But yeah. it was like, and so I was asking, like, I'm like, how do you, how do you get into it? Like, how does your, like, how do you guys handle a company that size? Like, and they're just, and I'm getting knowledge bombs. Left yeah. I love mm-hmm. it because, and they're just excited, you know, and, and to just to talk there. about what they do. Yeah. I think people realize that most people just are proud of what, most yeah. people are proud of what they do and they like to educate, you yep. know, and it's, you have a few of the pompous mm-hmm. circumstance assholes that will be like, uh, Oh, yes. I've never met anyone oh, like that. Yeah. Never, so surprising. Yeah. And somebody else is like, <laughs> I, I've ever had meetings where like, well, I'm going to go out and get into my bends. I'm mm-hmm. like, cool. I'm going to go out and get into my truck. Mm-hmm. Like, what do you want? Like I have count, like I, we, we laugh. People like expect a certain level. I'm like, I don't judge success based material possessions. No. I don't care. And I think that like speaks to a lot of people as well, being able to kind of find you approachable. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've never been a big fan of suits. It's mm-hmm. never been how, you mm-hmm. know, tattoos, whatever. Yeah. Come as you, whoever you are, yeah. as you are. And if you. suits are who you are, then you, then Great. you, uh, you, that mm-hmm. you kind of exude that. So that's what I, like, you can't be, and you can't pretend to be someone to else. What, yeah. well, look if you like see me in a suit, you know? you're looking at me in the most uncomfortable, yeah, sweating be- position, <laughs> humanly <laughs> possible. And we've had that a couple of years ago that we were walking through the grocery store. We just worked out and, you know, we're looking, we look, we're, I'm looking better than I do now, but we're in tattoos <laughs> and whatever. And we're approachable because we just look like a normal family and people mm-hmm. are like, Hey, I've got like, you guys are the Rexy's people. We're like, yeah, you mad about something? Mm, yeah, something? I like, might be. Yeah, I might, I, I, I she, is. she is. And so she, she's the boss. And, and, and but I think it's big of the approachability, and mm-hmm. that's huge. Like that when you're just yourself, mm-hmm. and I, I think the social media is empowering that. I mean, yeah, but if, you also have to find boundaries because then if you are yeah. really, pro- I mean, that's what I'm struggling with a lot. Mm-hmm. Is yeah, that I because you get approachable mm-hmm. and you you are open, then all of a sudden uh, you're like, uh, then you get the free knowledge bombs, and yes. then you're in that cycle of giving everything for mm-hmm. free. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, and the thing is, I talk to everybody. And so she's like, well, she'll be in the truck with Roland. We, we can't bring the baby into whatever store it would be right now. Mm-hmm. And she's like, five minutes. I'm like, oh, it's like two. She goes, see you in 20. <laughs> yeah. And it'll yeah. happen. And it, and it is. And it's, we've had to. Because he likes to talk a lot. The, the mm-hmm. staff, like you can't, give, you can't give out my cell phone number. Like you can't do right. it. And you can't like in the social media. And mm-hmm. it was yeah. a thousand text messages on Mondays by 5 p.m. is my average. Mm-hmm. And it's, 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 I had 37,000 text messages in one month on just my phone, much less 20 some social media accounts. Nope. It's nope. insane. Yeah. <laughs> it's a big old I have nope. not, yeah. I've had my phone off of silent, I think twice in a year. Otherwise it'd me a stroke is ding, ding yeah I can't do I, I don't give my I've given my phone number out a couple of times and that's not okay but it's it's hard because I mean I value people and I want like with my right. clients but I, they'll so for me it's emails or messages but they'll come through and I think that they I think we all kind of tend to believe that we're the only one yes so they're like I don't understand why you don't have time for me but like if you looked at the way my day goes I mean I don't have time to spend even five mm-hmm. minutes with yeah. every single person because yeah, then I would yeah. never get my work done yeah well, we've got a great team and I just told them like between each company I'm like and I put a message out yesterday Jim staff, I'm like, listen, like, I know you think I'm the person to answer this and I might be, but you can do it. But, too, but, but like, group, yes. group, group mm-hmm. all of us. Mm-hmm. I said, so whoever's got the time that way, the customer, whoever it is can get, whoever's got the most. Cause I, I trust my Nick, my mm-hmm. business partner in the gym He's fantastic. And, and Steve, our GM, you mm-hmm. know, they're great guys. And, you know, Rexius, I've got managers, I've got business partners, VHI, I've got owner partners. I'm like, they're all awesome at their job. Just group it because you know, like, I just, all of a sudden like, I'll get an anxiety issue. I'm like, and done mm-hmm. Brittany, mm-hmm. fix yeah. it. I think it thing, when you, when you, yeah, that, when you've yeah. built like your, your little baby, it's, mm-hmm. it's then hard to, let go. Trust everyone. Yes. Yeah. And trust other people to do. It is. Mm-hmm. And so I like to be part of it so I can oversee it. Yeah. And it's not just my sole responsibility to yeah. be on it. Right. And T- Tim, Tim, Tim is great, but when Brittany speaks, it's the room. Yes. And it's, it, it is and, it, and it's perfect. I mean, you know, it, she, it, it, she it, handles, it, it absolutely is true, but, but she handles it well and professionally and, it gets done. It does. I and need it, to and take it, some it, tips from you. That's where. <laughs> so I'm like, would anyone I think, mind I think, helping I, me with I this? think it's because we have six kids uh-huh. and mm-hmm. because we're used to like, okay, listen, here's You're how You're managing a happen. small yeah. business of, exactly. we are. of little people. Well, and <laughs> lately, I've had to step in with the companies a little bit more because everybody feels like they're the exception. And you want everybody to feel like they're the mm-hmm. exception, but at the same time, they're not. You know, like, beca- yeah. And with employees, you have... How many, we have a few man, handful of managers and then we have almost a hundred employees between all of the stores, the gyms, the franchises, and they all think they need to reach out directly to him. Mm-hmm. And I've had to kind of step in and be like, okay, this group text is for the podcast. This group text mm-hmm. is for this. This group text is for this. If you text outside of these, you're not going to get an answer. 
Mm-hmm. Or Good, you're probably yeah. going to get something from me that's not very pleasant. I, I learned that the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because I, I want to get back to everybody, and I have the thing is it stops. I can't stay focused on anything right. if I'm constantly yeah. because I. And, yeah. Jen's like looking at me like I'm hey, not a multitasker. Totally <laughs> he is 100 not a multitasker. Yeah. I can multitask the shit out of things. So <laughs> I can ha- I can multitask two things. You can handle twelve. There's a difference. I'm not like completely inept. I can handle two thinking things. Thinking and once. texting. <laughs> <You're-> <laughs> okay, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah that's true. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, but yeah. so yeah, like I've had What's, to step in and just kind of be like, okay, we're going to input policies and procedures mm-hmm. in place because yeah. it's been such a small company mm-hmm. for so long. And it is a family run company that you don't want to put those corporate right. procedures in place, but it's gotten to a point now where we have to, yep. it, mm-hmm. you have to streamline it. We yep. have to have avenues for people to go Espe- to. Especially and, right now, because right now it's like in my pocket, it's on a week to week basis because what happened with the economy and what's happened with lockdowns and everything else, like, I, who knows what's going to happen next mm-hmm, week. And mm-hmm. so, I mean, I was going to ask you guys, like, how is that affected with COVID and restrictions? Has that affected the industry as much at all for you guys? I've, I've taken on more clients. I've been busier than, than ever. Like, yeah. this is yeah. blown yeah. my business out of the water, I yeah. think. So. And I, I was curious, like, with, like, with financial planning, did that change people's discretionary income for, for investing or no? Or Do you know what? The because most drop? of my clients aren't coming to me for investment management most mm. of them coming into me for the plan okay you know this is a, a lifestyle change yeah versus a temporary thing or you know i don't want to just look at my retirement let me look at every single thing i have yeah, yeah. i can't even look at my credit score and understand it so it's kind of like the whole picture so it's not really and the if demographic anything, of client kind of puts people into a tailspin right now like i need to yeah. know all of this because right. i need yeah. to be able to and those conversations are actually happening more at home now because couples are at home together and yeah. that's they my, are and they've my probably lost an income mm-hmm. so they need to like for us it came down to like we were like four years ago we mm-hmm. didn't have an ounce of debt we're like, yeah. oh, i hate debt I stand <laughs> it um you know and i've had businesses fail i've had financial mm-hmm. reversals so i've been through that shit and i was heavily invested in bank stock in 08 at mm-hmm. my home yeah. So that went that went well. Interesting. Um, yeah, that was horrible. <laughs> and so I'm like, okay, I'm investing in me only, the businesses, things, tangible mm-hmm. things I can control. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you know, obviously kids and the house and more businesses. And we doubled down and tripled the size of the gym and bought a second gym and then in and, and the VHI. Because I'm very much mm-hmm. like, I'm always pro growth. That's me. Mm-hmm. And also, looked at her and we went through COVID for us. We're like, okay, fine. Personally, mm-hmm. financials, we, let's pay off debts. I don't, mm-hmm. I don't want to have massive liabilities. Let's get back to having ourselves some yeah. sort of emergency fund. Let's, you know, and like I hadn't invested in stocks in years. I'm like, let's, I go, let me do this. Let me play around this a little bit. I have no idea what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, it was one of those, we had to have serious conversations, I think because we were home more mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. and we were like, okay, like if something happens again, I want to be in a stronger position where I don't have to worry. Yep. Cause granted, I mean, retail, yeah, I'm shit in a brick. Be perfectly mm-hmm. gone. I had no idea. Totally. Iowa, yeah. I have stored in Iowa that I own. We had to shut it down. 90% mm-hmm. drop in a week. Oh, shit. Mm-hmm. We had to shut it down for three and a half weeks, four weeks. And the grants did allow me to open back mm-hmm. up. We're on a store now. We're, so we're still on short mm-hmm. hours across all stores. Mm-hmm. One of our franchises in Texas did not make it, won't make it um, because Sorry. of the situation. And it, and it is. And we're obviously, I take that very personal because these are people right. who trusted yeah. me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I get other ones where like, hey, this state's good. Like, I'm going to open a new store. I'm like, hey, yeah. you yeah. know, I mean, it's it, it's crazy seeing that difference. And that's business. And, and, and it's it not a personal thing. And I think a lot of people get hung up on the fact that, you know, that it is a personal thing. Yeah. You are feeling like. Well, oh, yeah, because yeah, if you, especially, like, my husband had, he throws out these little one liners sometimes that I think are just brilliant. <laughs> yeah. And we were talking about, because you, as a business owner, you have employees, you have franchisees, and you, you feel really responsible for them because you're yeah. the one that kind of, you're, you're mm-hmm. almost like a, a parental figure to them yeah. and you're kind of mentoring them. Um, and when COVID st- kind of started happening and the people beneath me were getting really, really panicked and nervous, and it was, oh, I was just completely stressed out. Like, mm-hmm. how am I going to ensure that they're going to be okay, that I'm going to be okay? I'm not sure what's going to happen. And my husband was walking out one day and said, um, hey, Jen, when we get on the plane, what's the first thing they say to you? And I'm like, uh, he's like, during the safety thing, you know, put your own ma- put your mask on first before mm-hmm. helping others. Mm-hmm. And he's like, put your mask on first. Yeah. I I'm love like, that. Oh, I like that. OK. Really yeah. Good, yeah. yeah. Like, and it's it like resonates with me all the time. Mm-hmm. So you do have to set those boundaries. You do have to be like, OK, mm-hmm. I, I want to help my owner in Texas. I want to help these other people, but I also yeah. have to make sure that I'm mm-hmm. protecting but, myself. Well, that was it. And I think like when it first happened, of course I, I have connections in the government and I speak and, and so like I knew that the loans were coming out. So I had to, I dove in, I had to dive in. I guess yeah. All my franchises, same as when they didn't know how to start a business mm-hmm. and how to start an LLC. I'm like, they're going to come to us. And so I yeah. need to know the in and out of every single portion of mm-hmm. it. She had done some webinars. I sat there and just read CPAs. <laughs> I'm like, I go, I need you to first grade me, give me the eighth grade. Yeah. Okay, give me first grade, eighth grade. Give me the cliff notes. Hey, give me the 
cliff notes and then that way I can get through. And I got right to bulge in, but it was like yesterday. I'm like, yeah. hey, like message me. And, and some of my best franchisees who are very like, I don't understand any of this shit. Mm-hmm. I go, okay, well, here it is. And even our partners who didn't, you know, but that was one of those yeah. things. Yeah, like, it, I mean, that they can be kind of tricky to fill out those government things. forms. Totally, are a pain yeah. In the ass. Yeah, they. I mean, we we. That's well. Again, going back to the experts. So when this all happened, my husband has franchises also. So he went to his his legal team basically and, and find not financial advisors. I don't know who it would be, but anyway, basically just said, I need you to dumb this down and put it. So basically kind of created a worksheet. Like this is exactly what you do. Mm-hmm. What yeah. sites you go to, how you fill it out, what you need to be saying, like, mm-hmm. and put it in very, very easy to understand. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Well, we got to the point where like people are just trying to get like Nebraska is doing one right now, five to 15, five to 50 employees. They're doing a grant program mm-hmm. started in. And so like, I was like, I don't even know. I go, listen, just hang on. I'm literally going to my own uh, Heartland payroll account, screenshotting pictures, <laughs> Click here, click there, mm-hmm. download there, yeah. save it like this. Mm-hmm. He goes, oh shit, thanks, dude. Because I knew I, was, I go, it's either that on my screen share because mm-hmm. it, yeah. it literally because they're all it's a sense of urgency because uh, and it is so many people don't know how to do it either. Mm-hmm. So oh, yeah. I mean, like even the CPAs that I work alongside and, and collaborate yeah. with, they were like, give me a minute, mm-hmm. I need to, there's an update. Yeah. And yeah. it's changing. Well, it's nothing so yeah, often I've ever experienced before. Yeah. Yeah. And I think as well, like a lot of the the people in like I would say our age group yes they might have experienced 2008 2009 but this is again a different a different it's a whole new animal I mean the thing is it it made me because of 0809 Mm -hmm. even Y2K I mean that's what I keep bringing up yeah I'm happy with I'm happy when I have it on my podcast and even deal with 0809 much less Uh, Y2K I'm like you're dating the hell out of me Uh, I'm so old (laughs) but I think it's because I've been through that I was prepared to be like okay there's some shit's gonna happen I don't Mm -hmm. know what's gonna happen but I'm ready to jump and do Mm -hmm. what I need to do and I think a lot of the newer business owners are like, holy shit. Yeah. I'm like, well, I already lost my ass once and I'll be fine. I was pretty calm about it. I, yeah. I just, I was like this. I, I said, all the business owners in the podcast, I said, I go, it's, it's like, it's like having a brother or sister and they broke out your parents' window. So you know some shit's gonna fly, but you're not the one in trouble. Mm-hmm. I go, it's like, oh my god, oh god, they're gonna kill you. Yeah, you know, and that's how I felt the whole time. I didn't do it. Right. This is nobody's fault. But that's almost kind of the hard part about it because you're like, well, yeah. you know, you especially when you work so hard to build yeah. something up, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, I had no control over this. Yeah. Oh yeah, and and that's is it. We had a lot of our friends are, are our restaurant owners, mm-hmm. and right. like, and they're still like, holy shit, like, what do we do? And, and retail, we're still like, we were able to adapt, and I have a yeah. great staff. Everybody, so we mm-hmm. went from a staff of forty four, the Rexy Square stores to 13 mm-hmm. literally pretty much overnight and then we start bringing people back right. and just doing what we could Jim same thing we went to no staff at all to just on the side cleaning crews to bringing some and notices mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so and it's it, been interesting to see I think from my so because I deal with um, there have been a couple of things that have come out of COVID like because I deal with businesses globally it's been mm-hmm. really interesting to see you know as I'm talking to someone that's in London or in France or you know we're, we're talking to different business how it's impacting everyone globally has been yeah. really interesting but it's also been interesting to see how many business owners have just said, like locally, friends of mine or people that have just been like, yeah, I'm just done. Like, versus how many people have been like, okay, I've got to change this mm-hmm. up. Like, I'll have people calling me saying, okay, Who I can't do this anymore. Challenge. Like, mm-hmm. I'm working with a couple of gyms that I've yeah. just started saying, you know, what else do you have? Like, we, I know you can't, you know, have your gym open right now, but yeah. do you have PDFs? Do you have, can you do Zooms? They don't have to just be about, you know, yeah. fitness nutrition. You can do like mental health, just have some, you know, charge yeah. for group sessions where your accountability, like, what did you do from home? There's so many other things yeah. you can bring in. And so many businesses have been fighting for their business, whereas other businesses are like, eh. And I saw yeah. that a lot. I was like, we're, we're just waiting for something. But like, oh, they were sitting in the fence before. I'm like, okay, I don't have the passion to fight through this. I go, well, that's your sign. Right. I mean, that's just it. I mean, yeah. I told yeah. some people, like, don't just shut down, sell the damn thing. I mean, if you got, if you have a name, you already built a customer base, mm-hmm. you just don't want to do it, sell it. And that really says to maybe that wasn't your right path anyway. Yeah, right. it is. And we all change. I mean, every seven years, we're a whole new mm-hmm. person. You know, like what I was doing 10 years ago versus now is completely different. I only wanted one shop, one and two, that was it. Just me running a sling yep. at supplements. All of a sudden, I'm like, I never even get to go sell anything, which is yeah. why I have a podcast so I can talk more now. <laughs> and, and, all, and, all, and it was it was one of those that, uh, like, I didn't want to sell anything on my website. I, Hate website. I'm anti bodybuilding.com, anti Amazon. I'm like, hey, we're a big following. Our website should really kick up a notch, you know, like, because <laughs> we have a lot of people who lived here, who yeah. moved. Yeah, college right. kids, high school kids, and all of a sudden we're we're selling like crazy, and it, it's great. I'm like, but I don't. I mean, we're gonna talk because I, I really I still don't know shit about my website. Um, I know, basic, you know. I mean, I, I mean, I can do one page, but I don't. You know, it's but so 
what is, I mean, one, when's the next Pempreneur Conference? Do we have an idea with everything I was thinking about that on? this morning. We didn't, we kind of put it off, but yeah. And we, we, we put it off because, you know, we wanted to make sure that the people that we had as well, um, that were involved in it were ready because they all are business owners themselves, yeah. you know, and there's a lot of things going on right now that they've got to navigate and we don't want to overshadow anything like that. Mm-hmm. Um, we still want it to have, you know, a real kind of a holistic look at what the Omaha area looks like we yeah. want to have people representing all different demographics yeah right because um, we, we were really focused on that when we started it as well as making sure it wasn't just a specific demographic of people yeah. that we were yeah. having on it yeah. mm-hmm. we wanted to be inspired by all different types of people from backgrounds yeah. backgrounds experiences else. brand you know yeah. absolutely yeah. um so i think for us it's gonna it's gonna be I, I want it to be sooner. I was thinking september but yeah who knows I think we'll have to yeah. kind of wait we, and see how things we've go. been kind of like going by what what things are released mm-hmm. with. We're going to go back to the first. So our first one was um, at Champions and mm-hmm. we had, you know, a couple, we had a, BC Clark was our MC, and then we had She's a, amazing. I love her so much. Um, and then we had, you Rachel. know, Rachel Fox was our kind of our, our guest speaker and then we had a full panel mm-hmm. and then we had like a one-stop shop. So pretty much if you were thinking about starting a business, you had someone, that you, you had a photographer you could talk to, someone in finance, you had um, mm-hmm. someone that kind of dealt with like bookkeeping, HR, I don't remember who all we had. Oh, so there was Caitlin, who's CPA. Mm-hmm. Um, we had the uh, Videography, legal, legal team Ryan. from Hightower. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So we had a bit Website, of everything. Website, social yeah. media. Yeah. So kind of you could go through and just be like, what would I need to do this? Or what mm-hmm. does this look like? Or what are your, you yeah. know, kind of get to... We're seeing some options. of the conferences start back up in July. It's going to be interesting to see how to navigate it and how we're going to do with mm-hmm. distancing, what the rules are. We have the health yeah. conference, which mm-hmm. I'm, I'm speaking at, and we've had 10,000 people through there before. Wow. And I have no idea. Like, I have no idea yeah, at all. Yeah, I mean, our thing whole was, like, make it a brunch, you know, make it fun. Yeah. yeah. Make it yeah. easy, yeah. but it's, having that food now may I not know. be, yeah, well, you know, so you're going to have to adapt to things well, like that. Well, the too. next weekend after that, July 18th, we have the, the NPC Body Blank Show, which has been moved, like, three times, and that's... Yeah. Real close quarters. I mean, there are people yeah. who are in it, and it's like, well, how's it going to work? I have no idea. I'm going to show up, high yeah. five people, and you know, with a glove and a mask on. I, I don't know. Yeah, I that's mean, crazy. How you, it, yeah. it is, and like for us, like we have to go to see some of our franchisees, but every state's got a different it's regulation. Different. Mm-hmm. So, like Colorado, they're locked down. Like yeah. it's it's, and we flew through Denver last weekend. I'm like, oh oh. You guys are at that level right now. Okay, cool. Mm. Like I didn't, you know, we don't know until we got off the plane. Yeah. So it's I interesting. Walk out, just. Lallygagging, just chilling. Yeah, yeah. and then I'm looking around like everybody yeah, has it, masks. We are really, it's different here in it Nebraska. Is. I mean, that's mm-hmm. yeah. We were in Texas last weekend, and and you, you wouldn't know. have even known. Mm-hmm. No. Yeah, and then my, I've got my family in the UK who are like, <laughs> yeah. Locked up big time. You know, they yeah. can't even get Estes right now. I was going to say, well, it's because we, we, well, we, we, really we, 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 we had Joe Binley on a couple of weeks ago. Joe's a very good friend of mine. He was Project ADs from the UK. And mm-hmm. his, so his brother had come over a week before they locked everything down. Mm-hmm. He had the coronavirus. Went back mm-hmm. to the UK. He was hospitalized. And Joe was, Joe already has like an autoimmune disorder. So he was 16, 17 days bedridden. Yeah. So we had him, he, I'm like, hey, you'll be on the podcast. He goes, bro, I can't leave my couch. I'm like, so turn your phone sideways. Let's do this. <sighs> and he wouldn't do it. So finally when he felt better, he came back on. But he, yeah. Was, yeah. he was locked down hunting the beach. They couldn't leave because he, yeah. so he was locked down for weeks. Yeah. Joe doesn't own TV. Joe doesn't own oh a table. Gosh. He has a couch. It's the first time he's had since he left the UK or even then last like because he, he's one of these companies. He's got three international companies. He's very, very successful. And mm-hmm. he has never rented an apartment. He's lived in hotels. This is the first time he's ever had an apartment ever in the last That's 10 crazy. years. Oh, he's fantastic. He's one of our mm-hmm. best friends. And, mm-hmm. and he goes, I finally rent my first apartment. <laughs> I have no furniture and lockdown. <laughs> oh my I gosh. have no TV. So somebody else dropped off some old tube TV for him just so he had yeah. something. He goes, I don't even watch TV. He never, yeah. that's it. Yeah, it's, it's not his thing. It's he's, not his thing. He's, he's a workhorse. He's a real, all he does is work. And, it's probably and been kind of good for him. I it, imagine, it, it, I it, it, for us, like and for us, I'm actually getting to do all the 900 projects I've always said I was going to do in my house because <laughs> I can't travel anywhere. I've been a little jealous about uh, people. Like, and it's, it's one of those, like, I can't complain. I don't want to, it's been a huge yeah. blessing that I've been able to mm-hmm. stay busy. Yeah. But on the other hand, I hear all these people that are like, oh, I've been able to do this or I've, you know, yeah. and I'm like, oh, I just want, yeah. Yeah. But we kind of, we even said with, with the Fempreneur Fair, since we didn't get to do our event, we kind of changed things, which we both need to finish our blogs. But, yeah. um, we kind of <laughs> said that we were going to ask people we, we want the this when, when we do finally put on our event we want it to be a butterfly it kind of is going to be the yeah. symbol yeah. like because emerging. you get yeah. to choose how you're going to emerge from this like mm-hmm. how are you going to emerge from this we're all kind of in a little cocoon right now and is it going to be you know are we going to be withered or are we going to 
actually do some amazing yeah. things during this time mm-hmm. and come out better and well, that's, like that. Uh, yeah. Do you guys, with, with the fem, the female entrepreneurs group, like, have you guys done much for outreach with like high, like high schools, elementary or middle schools? Because we got to speak last year at Miller North, and I speak at high schools all the time, but then she came and we talked about all the companies can, yeah. our kids go to Miller North Middle School. Mm-hmm. It was a chance to embarrass them in the public, so I would never yeah. pass up. <laughs> and it was funny, like all the boys were asking me questions and, and the girls were like, do you guys have any questions? Well, no, I'm like, Oh, it was kind of one of those like, oh, no, she runs that part. And all of a sudden, ears perk up, and they start asking her questions. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I think to have female representation mm-hmm. in Washington doors to, to, the, to those kids, because in middle school, high school, they're like putty. Right. They yeah. are. They're, they're, I mean, they're very, they're in there. They want to know. They're impressionable. Yeah. Those say, we've been trying to do a lot more of that. We and, just had this conversation yesterday yeah. with another, mm-hmm. with uh, uh, Dig, Discover Your Genius. is a symphony workforce kind of puts it on. But that's one of my goals as I'm kind of growing and changing and, and going mm-hmm. more with Nerdville. I want my, my nerds, my little designers are, I keep saying little, they're not little, they're actual people. <laughs> I don't know why I call them. <laughs> they're all better players yeah. are my kids. They're, they're, they're adults. It. They're adults. I get they're, it, yeah. yeah. Um, but I, they're going to start taking on more of the role with the clients. And then I really want, I'm really passionate about the youth understanding, you know, my daughter's 20. Mm-hmm. So kind of understanding the, the, the college aspect or that, you know, you can do there's so many other, I think we push college so much and there's so many we, trades yeah. that we're missing out on or just being able to understand that entrepreneurship can be a, a really attainable goal. And yeah. so we're, I, I'm actually getting ready to do a, a career fair. Like remember how they used to do career yeah. day, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. but I want it to be hosted at, at Nerdville and yeah. then have, you know, all sorts of different people come I in to talk great. to I, both. Think, I love that. Like, so and we, boys we, and girls. We had, and, they should have seen the teacher's face when some kid goes, Hey, can I ask a question? I go, yeah. College worth it. No, um, depending on what you do. What if I do what you do? I go, no. And they go, do your grades matter? Uh, later, this, the teacher's looking at me, shaking her head. I'm like, effort matters. Working hard they matters. Go, yes. Work, yes. Effort yes. matters. I go, did your grades mm-hmm. ever matter? He asked me specifically. I'm like, no. And she looked at my god lady. I'm like, alive. Yeah, Sorry. if you're like, but, a heart surgeon, yes, yes. Right. college and grades. I, want, I are, want you in school. Are, right. yeah. I want you. I want the top of the class. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you're going to be a pilot, yeah, if you're right. a pilot, I don't want. I don't, class. Yeah, thank you. That's what I was going to say. I kind of like to fly. Um, and it, but I say it's one of those. That I think that more of that kind of conversation. The still fact is, if I have to call my plumber or a mechanic. Like. I mean, I, our electrician he does all of our electrical work for the gyms. Nick's brother. I mean, I mean, he, he's massively successful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's really, right. I mean, more than it's most. Also our electrician. Mm-hmm. It really is. Well, it is, and it, it's it's fun. Is it really? Yeah. <laughs> One thing, and it's just watching him over the last four years as he started mm-hmm. and what he began with, and like, well, hey, I got like yeah. ten projects. Yeah. You mm-hmm. Throw it, and all of a sudden he's like, yeah, I'm busy. Oh, we're too busy for him, you know. Uh-huh. Good yeah. for you. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. absolutely fantastic. Yeah, you have to book ahead now. Yeah, mm-hmm. I know. Yep. I know. I, I had to get a light fix, and he. We did that with our daughter. Our oldest daughter's 20. And Mm -hmm. when she graduated or when she was graduating and we were looking at colleges and we went to some amazing colleges and I could picture her going to college there, but we went to the business department and, you know, we went through the whole thing and then we sat down with her and we're like, okay, Lex, this is what you want to do in life. Mm -hmm. This is how much college is going to cost. This is how long it's going to take you to pay back college. You want to own land someday for Mm -hmm. an event venue. Do you know how long it's going to take you to pay off all that college in order for you to even be able to purchase that land? Not saying that college is bad, but if you want to be an entrepreneur, why are you learning from somebody who is teaching business and not actually living it? So and, and yep. it's one of those, and I think, and like you brought that up with the university over in the UK. Like we had the, the gen ed year, yeah. Let's just go waste your time. Let's party and let's take a bunch of classes. So crazy. Now, and, and the thing is, like <laughs> and they do it for the experience. You no, know, they did, and 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 you know, it, it's. I'm not saying I didn't. I get some cool classes that caused me to go into some different directions. Sure, but the amount I had to take and pay for. Stupid, right. and you know, I mean, it only took one year being a history major to find out I couldn't make anybody money being a history major. I'm like, mm-hmm. I better go into business, and you know, and that and was yeah. it. And but I think that I think impacting the youth and spreading this mm-hmm. to them, mm-hmm. like, it's huge, and it, it is. And I getting told, them to see the real world experience is so much more valuable. Yeah. I, I feel like, I mean, not knocking college at all, but I just want no. them to know that there's another option out there. Yeah, really, mm-hmm. like you were ready and you missed the deadline and going into work, like that changed your yeah. entire path. And I think that's I've said that for a while. <laughs> Don't lot. think I could deal with high school kids right now teaching. <laughs> English lit. No, no it's not being no, the no. for I, me I, right I, now. I, no. We've got two of them at home. If we, yeah, if you, if you want, want to pr- 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 have fun. Oh, I just want to read, but talk about books I've read, and you know, give you yeah. a critical analysis till I'm, you know, blue in the face. But. Um, you know, it's not the direction that I felt like. Well, it's, yeah. it's right. Like, but our kids are like, I mean, we have a 14 year old son who will uh, be 15 soon and he wants to be a gamer and a YouTube. I'm like, look, go, 
We get to work. He's mm-hmm. like, well, I go, it's sitting right in front of your face. He's putting in 40 hours a week right now. Gaming. Like, yeah, even gaming. He's actually creating his building. Oh, that's awesome. Coding yeah, yeah. and doing mm-hmm. all that. And, yeah. and, and honestly, that's who I'd ask about my website uh-huh, previously because yeah. he's smarter yeah. than I am. And, and it, that's his thing. Do your thing. And yeah. everyone well, wants to be a lawyer. Cool. Get good at school. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, well, she wants to be an OBGYN. Right, cool. Be good at school. Like the thing I think it just at them, I want them to know something. Yeah. Daughter, so something. Do you do what you want to do. Yeah, mm-hmm. I just totally want, I want them to have the experience. I don't want college getting driven down their throat when just I want, because. Just yeah. because mm-hmm. that's well, what you have to have a degree. Your program, like where our oldest daughter, Lexi, she couldn't tell anybody she went to high school with that she didn't, she wanted to do her own business. Yeah. You knew uncouth, like they did not. They would have looked down on her if, so if bad. She yeah. told them that she didn't have plans to go to UNO oh, yeah. or so, somewhere. And I'm like, that's so she just like, it's oh, almost yeah. a shame. Yeah. 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 I, I feel like that's, I think, that I think I want the kids in middle school and high school to have the other options presented yep. to them. I think the career mm-hmm. fairs are family because they used to do that when we were younger. I don't yeah. see them anymore, I know we don't, ever. you don't get no. to see you. You're, you're not, you're, yeah, it's really just kind of, okay, it's college. And I know that when my daughter was in high school, they did, they took some you know aptitude tests and kind of, oh, you know, sure. what are you interested in? Yeah. It still wasn't like a real world snapshot of it's like, you right. work. See, I think it was for me, so even though I was a business major and I finally got a job working at GNC because I was spending so much money there, I figured the owner owed me. <laughs> Cause mm-hmm. I, I was playing college watching at the NFL and, and I, I was mm-hmm. like, listen, you're going to give me a job. I went there every day for two weeks until you hired me. Like, just hired I mean, I'll shut up. Mm-hmm. We found out that was wrong. I ended up managing the thing while I was going to school, while playing two sports. And that's what got me. All of a sudden, my grades skyrocketed up in college because now I had something from what I was learning that I love that I could apply. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Without the application and, and that tie-in, I don't think you're ever going to really soak in what you're learning mm-hmm. anyways. Mm-hmm. And so I've told the kids, like, figure, kind of figure out what you want to do, even in mm-hmm. high school. Mm-hmm. See if you can get a part-time job or internship in that field. Yeah. It just even, mentor for a while even. Yeah, or right. even well, yeah. And I think that more businesses locally need to be open to that too, just yeah, to I, say, I agree, you know, where it's not just an internship where you... Yeah, so I, I'm taking on an intern next week. Are you really? I am, yeah. So um, I'm super excited to have her start. She is doing business and uh, mark, sorry, marketing and finance in Lincoln. Um, but I didn't want to just give her just a generic internship. Go get yeah. me coffee. Yeah, I don't. I don't want her to give me get me coffee or you know right. uh, do this admin do this spreadsheet like that. That isn't value to me. That's not giving her any value back, and I'm not really allowing her to what, express. Well, what's it? Is it interesting? Some people look at an internship as free labor, or it's mm-hmm. a chance to really impact somebody. Yeah, yeah. and it's, I'm paying her by the way, just to clarify that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was the thing before. Like, we've had people, like high school kids who go to our franchise stores in Columbus, Nebraska, wherever, mm-hmm. like, hey, can I come job shout at you? Absolutely. So I had to fill out the paperwork and the legal. And I, mm-hmm. I do, we do it every time. Please come down. Let's mm-hmm. see, what's, we're gonna see what it's all about. We're going to be fast moving. Mm-hmm. Like, I'll be there by 9 a.m. I go, that's great. 8 15 it is. Yep. And like, I'm like, I go, what? You want to be a CEO? You got to be here before anybody else is. Yeah. And they're like, oh, cool. And they get excited. And for yeah. me, it, it reinvigorates my excitement mm-hmm. for what mm-hmm. I do. I think right. the energy that yeah, as I am getting older and I am more tired and I've done this for so many. <laughs> Times that he well, shut up. Hey, where's your bifocals at? And, okay, so <laughs> they told her she had to get bifocals last week, so she's she's mad. Yeah, it, but Been and, there. but but it's it's that um, that excitement, that energy. That I think mm-hmm. that yeah. reinvigorates uh, me. It just gets me re-excited. About yeah, like, definitely. Like, you know, I get to do this. I think we feed. That's the whole feeding yeah. off other people. Um, Five year goals, ten year goals. People hate this question, but I love doing it. So I don't want to be a big big business. Yeah, and I'm I'm pretty specific on that because I've seen so many financial firms get big, change their entire Mm -hmm. vision. And I don't want that vision to get lost. So I'm looking at in the next five years, I want it to be realistic and I don't want people to like not be able to afford to come to me still. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, one of my one of my kind of demographics of people are young couples. Mm-hmm. That's you know I want you to be able to still afford to come and see me because there's not yeah. there's not a lot of options out there. Yeah. yeah. So if I can still be that by keeping my focus on it, um, my intern like long term, if she wants to stay, we're going to try and look at what that looks like mm-hmm. for when she finishes college, and that's going to really be how I'm going to grow is through kind of bringing somebody on like an intern, but then working with them through college and then yeah. afterwards, yeah, and then bringing on another intern. And doing the same building kind a team. of thing. I love that. Building a team. Small. Yeah. But yeah. it's really small. They learn kind of the way that how I do things versus yeah. what the mm-hmm. industry says you should do. Yeah. Well, I that's the way, it. but that's how you pass on your, that's how you build a legacy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's for, mm-hmm. like I said, if I don't ever open another franchise, I'm good. If I open 50 more, as long as it's the yeah. right people, I'm mm-hmm. good. Yeah. I, I have no, and it drives all these franchise selling companies nuts because there's a lot of money in franchising if you hire yeah. companies, make mm-hmm. the fees, and I'd have to triple my price, is what I would do. Yeah. It's how they get right. paid. And I go, no. They go, why? Because I want an opportunity for somebody like me that could afford to do it. Mm-hmm. You could actually open seven Rexia stores for the cost of one GNC. 
That's how cheap it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I said, why? Because the hustler that understands what it's like to be hungry, that's somebody I can relate to. Right. Mm-hmm. I can't relate to trust fund babies. I just yeah. don't have anything in common. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. and I said, and they don't have the respect for the money they've earned. It's, it's a different totally. aspect, yeah. you know? And, but I think I told her, I'm like, we mm-hmm. grown cool. Like I told her no new companies. I'm not sorry. Anything else. No, yeah. Cause it's, well, really, I mean, my, my husband's goal for me is to basically allow him to retire within the next five years. So <laughs> there you go. Well, I mean, hey. he wants to be, he's, he's a musician on the side kind yeah. of apart yeah. from his day job. Yeah. Um, so we've built a music studio in our basement just out of the spare space that we had there. Um, mm-hmm. And that to him is going to be his, you can work and I will be down here. Mm-hmm. Well, that's, creating. What's, I mean, ours has changed significantly. I, yeah. I wanted to go into politics and I've been mm-hmm. asked quite a few times and I've turned it down every time because I have little kids. Yeah. And this last year I'm like, you know, Maybe. Maybe. I, don't know. I don't, I don't know. I mean, like, let's you know, like, I'm not going to lock myself down to anything. I really mm-hmm. enjoy what we're doing now. And yeah. And Nick and I, and, and Brittany and I talked about getting another gym location. We're like, yeah, I'm good. I think that's a, that's a big thing though. If you're still passionate about it in five years, that's when yeah. you know it's right. Right. Yeah. If there's something like, I know we've talked before mm-hmm. with how much you've changed your direction of where mm-hmm. you've been going with, with Nerdville. Mm-hmm. Like it, if you're not passionate about it, it's not right. If yeah. it doesn't, it doesn't make you feel excited or it doesn't make yeah. you feel like, yes, this, yeah. this is what's right. There have been a couple of times that I've almost gone down like a path and I'm like, something's just not like, or partnering with different people. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, this just isn't jiving. And yeah. And I just take a step back and then later on I'll be like, okay, nope. Like that was so off where it should be. Yeah. And that's Mm -hmm. kind of what we've done with ours. Like, okay, Nick was my employee. Mm-hmm. became my business partner. Mm-hmm. I had to fire him as my employee, which is great. It's a great day. I'm like, you're mm-hmm. fired as my employee. You're hired as my business partner. <laughs> high five. He goes, I don't think I've ever been fired and high five the guy at the same time. Like, you're welcome. <laughs> and Cody Guffey, VHI, same mm-hmm. thing. It just and, and it's Shane Yeager was my first employee ever who became my business. And that's mm-hmm. because that's that's where I'm at, where I'm mm-hmm. like, I want to see other people have that same kind of joy and, and who gets us excited. Plus, we yeah. have six kids. I need more hands on deck who cares mm-hmm. much about it as I do. Yeah. And, and if we, they care about it as much as you do, then you know they're going to be I can trust yeah. it. I can take a step away so we went to Texas for three days and every one of our partners was like, don't touch your phone. I go, I gotta touch my phone. Let us handle it. I, okay. There's something very mm. empowering to them. Like if you, and I've, I've found that's, I need to step back a little bit because when I let them do it, mm-hmm. they actually excel at it. But if I, if I'm constantly trying to, you know, nitpick or, I just or, told them before, like, and it's, it's been talked to and they all said the same thing. We really hate working around you. Go, Why? Cause you work 80 hours a week. Yeah, I know. But then we feel like I can't take any time off. No, I choose to do that. Like mm-hmm. I like, to, I don't yeah. do time off. Like it's mm-hmm. not a thing. Like, I, if there was twenty eight hours in a day, I'd work the extra four. Oh, I, I do time off. I, 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 I don't. I, and I, I just, I can't. Like at home, I can't sit. I'm building yeah. things that are. I just mm-hmm. don't. I don't have way too much ADD. I can't. I, I gotta be. I gotta be doing something. I can't sit yeah. still. And and I mean, but I think as well, your business isn't as mobile as like for instance yeah. for ours. So like yeah. I can take my laptop with me wherever mm-hmm. I am in the on the globe, and I can work from there. And that's awesome. I mean, right. that's absolutely. So that allows me to take time off, and we're, but I'm not off. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was, we took the kids to Mexico last year for a week, yeah. but it was, that's a trip for them. It's a trip for us, a vacation for them, because you don't actually vacation as a parent with your kids. Oh, no. no. no I'm, I'm, I'm making sure they don't kill each other half the time. Mm-hmm. So we were actually working from our laptops at that point, able to run things. So, I mean, but mm-hmm. it, it is that, you know, it's with our, it's just nice getting to actually do that now. It's, mm-hmm. it's actually, mm-hmm. and, the, and the fact they all have to look at me and go, don't work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they go, why? Just for your wife, don't work. I go on it. I mean, okay. Yeah, and I, I think, I think for me, my, my stepdaughter is one of my kind of reasons to yeah. take those mm-hmm. breaks. You yeah. know, actually spend time. And I think during this ho- this home home school, even though it's not been homeschooling um, time, it's really kind of made yeah. me realize that I, even if I want to work that extra ten hours that week. Mm-hmm probably not the right decision. Yeah. Well, it's, we've been more purposeful time where I actually yeah. just put it all away and I go hang out with the kids. And, yeah. and so I took the, the, the two younger boys swimming yesterday because mm-hmm. I had realized I had built this above ground monstrosity of a pool in my backyard and I did all the work. We put all the same. I built the, I the deck, the whole thing and I hadn't been in it yet. It's been there for yeah. weeks. I'm like, yep. oh shit, I haven't been in the water. Mm-hmm. Oh God. Okay. Cause mm-hmm. I'm working and I'm like, okay, I haven't spent any actual time with the kids and I built this thing pool. for the kids yeah. in the pool. Yeah. And I only made it 15 minutes. I'm like, it's cold. Well, that's yeah. important. Yeah. I mean, it's important but, to do like we, you know, we've tried to take some, we still need to plan a day next week, but oh, yeah. to, to kind of let yourself do that. But I think I, um, I talk about scissor time. Like when you were growing up, did you have good scissors in your house that you weren't allowed to use? Like my mom always yeah. said, don't use the good scissors for yep. that. So I kind of equate it to my time too. So I have good scissor time and I know that from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. I'm really focused. And if I can protect that time, then I can get way more done in those two hours than I would like the whole day with people interrupting me. So part of my new, like I just thought of this this morning, I'm going to have scissor time from 8 to 10. Like no one gets to talk to me. My, you know, 
um, no calls scheduled. I just have to focus, and then I'll feel better about taking an afternoon yeah. off and going swimming. I, or, I, you know? kind of developed that too. So I get up and do my cardio, and then I'm in the office. I tell her if it's after a certain time, I'm not doing yeah. anything else. I have to get mm-hmm. here before the rest of my staff gets to work. Right. First, blowing my phone up, I get I about two hours where I can get a lot of work done. Mm-hmm. If it's after 10, that same two hours will take six. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where I've yeah. kind of come in to kind of be that barrier mm-hmm. to be like, all right, stop. Yeah. And it's collaborate been, and listen. Oh, you're going to say some yeah. rap songs. Really? Yeah. <laughs> the five, 10 years for you. Like what's, what's I can do it. I, I'm there. I'm ready. If you want to see, <laughs> 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 yes. I'm probably not. I'll just be like the cheerleader. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first. first Tick, TikTok video on yeah. uh, TikTok. TikTok. That used to actually be my callback. And like when you're trying to get kids' attention, I would already say like, all right, stop. And then they'd all look at me and they'd all have to yell back. Yep. Collaborate and listen. That's fantastic. Ice yeah. back. Mm-hmm. You're going to be doing this today or TikTok. Right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. Five to ten year plan for you. Like what, uh, what's the goals? So um, I think I, like the thing I love the most about Nerdville is the, the fact that um, – we like I get to empower other people. So mm-hmm. I've got some that are, you know, moms, I've got college students, I've got former students of mine from St. Pat's. I've got basically it's it's been really neat to watch if it's just that you need a little bit of extra money. So it's something you want to do on the side or if you ultimately want to get out of your, you know, the career that you're in or the company that you're working for. It's been really neat to see people have this opportunity yeah. because the website design that we do um, and the coaching that we do kind of, you can do it from anywhere once you yeah. have learned. And um, so I really want to expand that. And so my goal is to think about bringing it. And, the, and then the other side of it is because we do these like training workshops. So with the um, Nebraska Enterprise Fund with BC Clark, mm-hmm. I've been able to help. We do like a day long workshop where you can pay a really reduced rate, rate like $250. But as we're do, if we're doing it as a group, mm-hmm. we can build a website. So that mm-hmm. allows people that are maybe a little bit more disadvantaged or don't have a big loan when they're starting their business, they can get that website built and kind of truly understand it together. So I kind of want to both like to focus on the training. I'd like to Mm -hmm. train more designers um, to whether they're local or, you know, elsewhere to kind of do what I'm doing um, and have that flexibility and the the financial freedom um, and then also be able to help train other businesses. So I'd like to ultimately see um, our Nerdville community grow bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. I probably won't take on any more than like five local nerds at a time, but I'd love to see them you know, they're all starting their own businesses. Um, Noah is my, he's, he's doing phenomenal right now and he's learning so much and he's building his own website right now and his own brand and his logo. And eventually he'll probably leave me hopefully. And then, yeah. you know, we'll bring someone else on. And, yeah. Mm-hmm. But hopefully just keep expanding. And yeah, and I think for the Fempreneur Fair, we've talked about what does that look like long-term as well? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Once we get something a little bit more established over the next couple of years to mm-hmm. then look at expanding that, right. maybe not down the franchise, yeah. More licensing Half, agreement. More licensing. I think, yeah. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Franchise, the, the initial French, French, franchising is expensive. It's expensive by yearly and, upkeep costs. Yeah. Or and because it's not, we're not designing it to be a big revenue stream well, for us. Well, so yeah. it's, and we've asked people who want to franchise the gyms, and I'm like, uh, we, and Nick looks at me, I go, no. Mm-hmm. It's it's a lot for it's a beast. A licensing mm-hmm. systems is easier because yep. I'm not looking to make royalties off of them. Exactly. Right. And I said with, with the, the nutrition business, it is a franchise. It, it, and there's yeah. certain level of control, but you know that's I think with us, we've actually scaled ours back. We had so many corporate. We've actually been selling off our corporate locations. Mm-hmm. Like well, no one's in Omaha always because mm-hmm. this is our home base. But I sold Norfolk because the second store I ever opened in 2011 to my manager for cost. It's my second most profitable store because he's one been there for four years working. Mm-hmm. But he's the he's he's the guy behind. He lives in the community. Yeah, and, yep. And he ended up breaking our store record a month after I sold it to him. I'm like, you've been holding back on me, wow, dude. Yeah. But it but it was one there's of a different yeah. There's yes. a difference. We Elkhorn. It's pretty much Omaha Metro, but we mm-hmm. let somebody franchise it instead because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. he lives there. He's from with high school there, and I'm like, you you do it. Like I I need to I need to step back. Like, it has to be so right. Yeah. It has to be the it, the right fit. And I know I can't be everywhere at once. Yeah. And mm-hmm. it, it just allowing us to kind of let them do their own thing we're trying to sell Sioux City and Kearney mm-hmm. as well which we also own because our guys are there I'm not there mm-hmm. I don't have you ever driven to Kearney <laughs> yeah it's, where, where it's is a Kearney little <laughs> it's three hours that direction it's straight west. And, on the way to Colorado right yes. yeah, yeah, yeah on the way to Colorado and, and, it, and it's funny <laughs> it's but a very boring part it's, it's a very very boring drive Kearney's a great community love the community yes. but I'm like that's six just, hours of my life I can't get back it's just a very and long drive it is I that's the thing about it everything's really spread out it is I have to go to Sioux City today as soon as we're done with this I have to drive product up there and that's an hour three hours i'm not getting back in my life either so mm. it's just one of those things where i told her i'm like well, i just that time when i was younger 
was one thing when our kids were smaller and they were all not really doing anything. Mm-hmm. It was one thing, but now that there's dance and oh, yeah. ballet yeah. and baseball and football and mm-hmm. swimming and boyfriends. You do look at time so nope, much. Don't mm-hmm. like no, boyfriends nope. don't know. Nope. This is why <laughs> I'm swollen. Nope. This is why I'm working out. Um, they have to be a little bit scared of me. They're way yeah. more scared of her than me anyways. Yeah. And there's girlfriends True. and there's boyfriends and there's all, that's a full-time job in itself. Mm-hmm. And, and, the, and, like, and the, like we realized we were cleaning the gym, so we never got to use it. Mm. Literally, yeah. like it was, we spent so much time cleaning and helping clients that we never actually got to use it. And I'm like, okay, we got to get back to mm-hmm. enjoying what we do. Yeah, and that's been a big thing. So, and I think that's one one of the um, the other things that I'm kind of looking forward to in the next kind of five years is seeing how the nonprofit takes off as well, because that's yeah. kind of like my little yeah side passion mm-hmm. even yeah. though it's still in finance like mm-hmm. teaching kids about money yes. and how the finance it's system amazing. works That's from like kindergarten all the way up it's, it's yeah. huge I um, love yeah. that and my 8 year olds been my like test subject yeah. Yeah. Cool. oh yeah I'm gonna, send, practicing. I'm gonna send all of our kids to you yeah okay. please well oh. hopefully I'm, I mean I, I envision it I'm only one member of the board there are a few of us but I envision it in the next five years to be in at least all the school districts yeah. maybe not necessarily all the schools but it's unbiased there's mm-hmm. you know it's non-denominational there's no religious aspect to it so it is completely inclusive yeah. yeah and that really allows everybody access i think for us like we were doing like four or five years ago was i, I was in the board of directors of ymca donated my yeah. time because i was a white kid and we'd gone on a mission trip to mexico built houses mm-hmm. we used to go to open door mission and we'd pack box in the mm-hmm. santa francis house and, mm-hmm. and also we got so busy at work we could do that and i think for part of us is you know the philanthropy aspect is just just donating our time one yeah. it's just it's good for your soul totally. two our kids, yeah. they need have to, yes. it's one thing that you can, we can say to her blue in the face, like I didn't have this growing up. You need to understand how lucky you are. And it's just mom and dad being full yeah. of shit. Whereas like, let's, you guys get your hands on the ground, get your hands yeah. Yeah. donate your time. It's part of what we all need to do for they society. Get to see the bigger I, I think some people as well feel like, you know, they have to give money to that kind of thing. Whereas I'm like, time, time. is time also is right. so much more. Time. Mm-hmm. And just giving your time to something that can help establish something just as mm-hmm. integral to every element of your life as money yeah. mm-hmm. and the concept of money can change people's lives. Yeah. Well, if it, you start that young. Well, it, it's funny that like, we, we couldn't go to Kyron's, um, not one more life, um, March last week because uh-huh. we were in Texas, but we, we did donate to help them out. But all of our staff, all the people that went there to work, we passed out water and we passed out popcorn mm-hmm. for free from all the companies and they all did it non-paid. Yep, our daughter actually awesome. took time off from her paid job to go mm-hmm. do it for free. And I didn't have to say anything. They all told me like, hey, you're not paying me for this, right? Mm-hmm. Well, I can. I was. Pl- I mean, I, I was yeah. playing. I'm like, no. Like, and it was funny that, that we've been able to push that, and I push that. Yeah. But I guess portray that, lead by example in that aspect. And I think that's it's just great for the communities as a whole, and that's that's huge. So why I want to have more time to do that kind of mm-hmm. stuff because mm-hmm. like we went to Mexico. I mean, that was. I mean, you're in the desert for four days in a tent, no running water, yeah. which that was. It makes t- you appreciate things so much. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh yeah. Bathing, mm-hmm. bathing, mm-hmm. yeah, it definitely makes the you appreciate paper. bathing. Toilet paper, yes, that's you know, <laughs> they definitely makes you appreciate certain things in life a little bit more. But you know, and like what I think is poor versus what is, and mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff for us is, I think, and that's for our kids too, making like. Hey, I think it's so important for the kids yeah. to see it. Like I'm, I'm, I've, I've traveled a little bit compared yeah. to my husband and my little one, and when we took her to the UK for the first time, it was just like. <gasps> This is like a different country, and I'm like, yes. yeah, the yes. world is big. <laughs> yeah, but there's like, there's so yeah. much that opens their eyes uh-huh. when they're mm-hmm. young. Like the Sunni, they can get exposed to things like philanthropy mm-hmm. or yeah. just other kind of cultures totally. and ways of doing things. Is just such a, a uh, great yeah, thing for them. them. They're, they're I was a horrible mother when I think my daughter was like maybe seven or eight, and she, I kept telling her over and over and over. I should ask her if she even remembers this over and over and over again to clean up her room, and she didn't, wouldn't do it. And so I gathered up some of her toys that I knew weren't her favorite toys anyway, and she was kind of outgrowing. But I said, we're, we're donating these. Like if yeah. you can't take care of them, then we're yeah. gonna. And we took them down to the Open Door Mission and kind of did yeah. a little tour. And um, it, I remember it was right before Easter, and the cash that she got for Easter and her little mm-hmm. Easter eggs and stuff, she wanted to go to Target to the dollar aisle and bought all like these gifts to take back down there and donate a second time. So it's kind of, fun. Awesome. I mean, I was, I yeah. know, I'm like, I'm a horrible parent, but it also kind of helped her see. Yeah. You know, it's not, yeah. Well, and then we do that with like, Christmas every year. They have to pack up stuff to give mm-hmm. away. And we've mm-hmm. done that at the, the gyms where the giving trees and all that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. I, I think it, it was a couple of years ago that I took my, I asked my staff, it was amazing. I'm even volunteer, but I went down sort of Thanksgiving meals down at, at, at an mm-hmm. elementary school down in North Omaha. And, and that was a whole new level of poor in our own community. People don't really realize they see it on the news where if you do, you're actually in it, you don't see it. And all my staff goes, Holy shit. I mean, there was mm-hmm. just some, 
mm-hmm. I told him, I'm like, oh, wait, yeah, this is the whole thing. This is, there's, I mean, understand that we're, we're blessed with opportunity mm-hmm. uh, abundantly. Yeah. And there are some people who aren't. Right. And, you know, I think it's it's part of, and that's, I don't know, it's the whole feel good thing. It's just one of those, mm-hmm. it, it, the, we talked, I talked about this yesterday, but it's the litmus test. Like, how are you as a person? Mm-hmm. I mean, there's a social media person and there's the person. And mm-hmm. are you the kind of person that leaves the shopping cart in the middle yes, of the aisle? the shopping mm-hmm. cart. If, if you go to the bathroom, everybody's like, all oh, you know, mm-hmm. washing hands happy right now, which is great. I love yeah. this because I used to work with the FDA and EPA. <laughs> so I, I'm a clean freak. Um, but the, the paper towels are on the ground. Do you right. want to buy it or do you pick mm-hmm. it up? Mm-hmm. And so every person in this building has seen me pick up paper towels. And that's mm-hmm. the kind of stuff that I think those little representation examples that we pass on yes. to our employees. And mm-hmm. it's funny you call them your kids. Uh-huh. We call all of our employees our kids. Mm-hmm. One, half of them are old, or the age that could be our kids, yeah. technically. And, <laughs> but we, we do. And I think it's and it's not because I think of them not as adults. It's because I think that as leaders of companies, entrepreneurs, we are leading an example that impacts people even if they're in their 30s yeah. already mm-hmm. or yeah. 20s or their teens. That And it's that kind of stuff. And my staff sees me take shopping carts back to yeah. the stores and push mm-hmm. them back. And they all know I'm busy or shit. Yeah. I can mm-hmm. take five minutes. Right. Everybody can take five minutes. Set the next so. person up for success. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's the whole thing when you go through Starbucks, which I don't go to Starbucks because I'm too cheap to pay for $7 coffee. But I've gone with her through Starbucks or our daughter and like somebody pays for somebody else's drink. Yep. Thing. I love that kind of shit. Yeah, that's and, that's, yeah. and that's just it. We did that at the hotel last week. Some dude and ate his money and I was like, I got you. Bought him a Coke. Mm-hmm. He goes, you, you want to get some cash? I go, just pay it for it, bro. It's, it's a dollar. Right. It's a buck. Just little things like that, I think, made a lot. I think as entrepreneurs and business yep. owners, we have an impact. That is so it doesn't have to be really. huge cash. No. It, it doesn't have to no, be No, just way. your time. Just just mm-hmm. a kindness. Just pushing. Like, it can be pushing, a, like putting somebody's cart back mm-hmm. for, when they're... When they're at load, at the loading their car up and then grow it, like, you want to take that back for you? Although now with yeah. COVID, like, I feel like that's, I, there've been a couple of times where I want to help someone, like, yeah. well, help you load your groceries or, you know, and then I'm like, oh, I can't. Like, yeah, it, feel, it's, it's weird right now. I don't want to, um, yeah. It, it is just strange all around. It, 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 it is like here in the building, it's like, I want to say hi to people. I'm a handshake. I'm a hugger. Mm-hmm. I can't. It's mm-hmm. really like I like for me not like I've been like okay do I reach out because I don't want them to feel awkward do I, I not do. and mm-hmm. she does and it I can't help it like I was taught in the, in the eyes handshake that's mm-hmm. just how it is that's yeah. respect for everybody it's really hard right now yeah mm-hmm. that's why our church isn't back in session yet because they're huggers and he goes I can't do it until we can hug yeah he won't yep. even start service until we can hug he just does it online which is kind of crazy but um, anything else like I guess the only ask you guys like if you the one thing you wish you knew when you first started what would it be. Probably just that, like leaning on other people and, 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 um, and maybe just the, the Picasso's napkin wisdom. I think a lot of people miss out on that too, like valuing your own worth and what you've, you know, the, um, not being, not comparing yourself to others and kind of understanding that you've, you put a lot of time and energy into learning your and honing your skills or product services, whatever it may be. And just to value that. And, um, yeah, I think mine's like just openness. Like if you have a a spouse, for instance, Mm -hmm. Yeah. Be open with them about all the struggles and things. Don't keep yeah. quiet. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Me and my husband have great open conversations about business. And mm-hmm. I was like bragging the other day to Jen. I was like, he's just said he's proud of me. Mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> little oh, conversations like support. that just make your day a yeah. different day. Yeah. And I think having those open and frank conversations, if you are feeling stressed by something in, in mm-hmm. business as a business owner, mm-hmm. um, if you are feeling like, wow, I'm just really overwhelmed right now, just having a person in your corner mm-hmm. yeah. to be your champion yeah. is huge. Um and that can be a spouse or a friend or also totally. like our little, your group. Find, yeah. find a, yeah. find a mm-hmm. tribe and be totally. authentic and get, yeah. 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 That's, that's, all, I mean, that's what we do. I mean, that's what I, obviously is best friend and it's, it's business partner. And then I also have friends who have nothing to do with my businesses, who, who own no stake in my, or business owner themselves, who literally aren't nice to me. I need that. <laughs> I need them to not kiss my ass and be a yes person. Yes. I need them to say audit me. Mm-hmm. They're like, you're doing this wrong. Like you, yeah. you should mm-hmm. be doing this, that, or the other thing. And mm-hmm. I'm like, and it's Mike Giovanni. It's my guy, you know, it's touch and tan 24 seven here in Omaha. And it's just Mike, Mike and I had our first business together at 19 and he's not afraid to hurt my feelings. Right. Yeah. You know, he'll tell me like, no, but I think they're still champions for you because they're mm-hmm. champions totally. to get successful. They want. He didn't, if he didn't, he didn't, he wouldn't tell it to me if it wasn't because he'll have me do yeah. the same thing in his mm-hmm. business. And, mm-hmm. and I think that that's so huge. Those peer groups. And, and to not be hurt by it too. Yeah. Cause that's, mm-hmm. I mean, to Maury to help me accountable with my website. I yep. immediately was like, who are you? Like, t- no. <laughs> yeah. you don't know about this. Like, yeah. yeah. But then I'm like, nope, I need to be, you know, be teachable and be able to take that criticism and mm-hmm. I agree hundred percent. So mm-hmm. tell, tell, uh, how do how do we find you guys? How do you guys want people to access you? Um, so I 
have a website? Yeah. Yay. There you go. <laughs> uh, it's Fivey Financial, spell F Y V I E Financial. Um, I'm on Facebook, Instagram. Um, I'm not on Twitter. That is just not me. Because um, you're not a Kardashian or. I, just, I, I don't know. I just don't want to tell everybody everything. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I, I, yeah, so I'm kind of out there. Um, we've got the Fempreneur Fair. I'm pretty much the same. Mm-hmm. Um, Fempreneurfair.com, yeah. Mm hmm. Um, yeah, that's basically, and I'm on email. You can book online directly with my calendar mm-hmm. that Jen helps Yay. you set up. <laughs> so you don't even need to call me first or email me first to set an appointment. So that's, that's basically awesome. where yeah. everyone can reach me. Sweet. And I said, everything's transparent on there with pricing, yeah. pricing mm-hmm. and everything. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm jenmaher.expert is my website. And then um, social media is usually Jen Maher Consulting. So like YouTube, Jen Maher Consulting. Yeah. I think that's what I have for Instagram. And Facebook, uh, Facebook actually, I believe, is Nerdville by Jen Maher. Oh. I tend to change my name. <laughs> all, yeah. Jen Maher's always in there. So if just you just Google, Jen Google Maher. search yeah. Jen Maher, you can, yeah. I, I have to do that mine. It's always Timothy D. Rex is on everything. It's oh, now whatever podcast, it's yeah. this or that, the other thing. And we've, we've changed them around six or seven times at this point. But as long as my name's in there, I'm like, it's not that common of a last name anyways. Yeah. And, Unfortunately, um, Jen Maher is. There's a lot of Jen Maher. Really? So, mm-hmm. There are no Kath Derrisons. Mm-hmm. So it is only me. <laughs> I've had to fight for my Google anyway. rankings and there's still a couple of people that I'm kind of oh, yeah? trying to bump out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys so yeah. much for coming on. I greatly appreciate yeah, it. I love yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, having us. Business, the expertise great. you guys have shared and I love the, the Fempreneur. I think it's fantastic and it is a father with three daughters. I love the fact that there are things out there that I can send them oh, to that's for yeah. them. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. It's just, love it. it's very empowering and I know that when Brittany and Lexi got involved and how excited they were and how, mm-hmm. yeah. how just awesome it was. I just think I would it, love it, to be involved in any way. I love uh, it. It's a happy for sure. Yeah, hats off to you guys. I think it's awesome. Thank so you. thank you guys so much for coming on. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Y'all got the leash, better talk right. Man, I do this, not a new kid, been a student. You're a doofus, on the real, leave you clueless. When I shoot shit, style too crisp. And I let it all hang out like a nudist. Oh, you wanna know who I am? Oh, you wanna know me? Well, I'm the man. Thought you knew. Now you know. What it do?